On for a Class 2A semifinal tussle between third seeded Faraday and second seeded A. Meet. Louisiana High School football playoffs are next on Game Time. to Tangibahoa Parish in Amy, Louisiana. It is the Yearview Louisiana Game of the Week, the Class 2A semifinals. The Amy Warriors 12 and 1 on the season and on a 12 game winning streak, taking on the Faraday Trojans. The winner of this game advances to the Class 2A state championship game. Faraday trying to get to its first title game since 1984. They haven't won a state championship since the 50s. Well, for the A Meet Warriors, they were last in the state championship game just two years ago when they lost a tough battle to Lutcher in the 3A title game. Let's take a look at our key players in this ball game. Brought to you by ITI Technical College. Let's first talk about Faraday. They got a talented quarterback by the name of Kobe Dillon. You see his numbers, 19 touchdowns, two interceptions. Certainly a guy that can throw it and run it. And Damien Milligan is an outstanding sophomore running back. Certainly a guy that should play on the Power 5 level in three years. Now you've all heard about him. Anybody that's been following high school football for you foul LSU you know about these two kids for the Amy Warriors that are key players for them and that would be their outstanding wide receiver Devontae Lee and then Ishmael Sopcher. Sopcher the number one ranked defensive tackle in the country and then Devontae Lee he's one of the top players in the state of Louisiana. Both of these kids have yet to decide where they will play in college but tonight their main objective is to make some plays and get a meet back to the state championship game. Let's bring in another member of our broadcast crew. We'll send it over to Smacker Miles. We had a chance to talk with both coaches. Smacker, I know you could be battling the elements just like these guys will today. Yes, we will be battling the elements probably all night according to the weather forecast, but there's already been some fireworks and a lot of excitement on this sideline. A little earlier, we talked to Coach Smith right, and Coach Powell about how their teams have prepared this week, knowing that a trip to the Dome is on the line. Um, you know, it's been one week at a time. You know, that's our motto, one week at a time, one game at a time. Be 1-0 this week, so we came out prepared. We practiced hard, had a good week of pre preparation. You know, we come out today and, and let it all hang out and hope we can get a trip to New Orleans next week. Coaches have done a fantastic job uh, from the defense to offense to special teams. Uh, our kids are, are very, very, very real rested. Uh, we feel that our bodies are pretty good. So uh, the practice plan that we put in, you know, we feel is going to give us a good shot to be uh, victorious tonight. Amit has not lost a game since the season opener against Country Day, while Faraday, they were in the semifinals last year, so they know what the big moment is all about. Kickoff coming up next here on Game Time. Game Time on Your View is brought to you by Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Ready to serve you with auto, homeowners, life insurance, and more. Real service, real people. West Feliciana Parish. The best place for you to live and work in South Louisiana is West Feliciana Parish. Check out wfparish.org. ITI Technical College, your key to a better life. And by Peak Performance. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete and everyone stronger, faster, better. I think that people want to be in West Feliciana because it's truly one of the unique parts of Louisiana. That if you live in West Feliciana, you can have it all. You can have a great lifestyle, a government that works for you and is open and transparent. You can have wonderful neighbors. You can have a great school. You can live in an environment that's free of fear from crime. We're less than 20 minutes from the Baton Rouge Airport, 30 minutes from the state capitol. What we have in West Feliciana is a place where you really can have it all. When I get back to Baton Rouge, I get in my blues mobile and I drive right on down to Partners Barbecue. And you know what I do? I get me some ribs, all tender too. 
some baked beans, some potato salad, some smoked sausage. <laughs> you got to come on down to Partners Barbecue, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Are we doing this? Here we look at the weather for tonight's game in a meet as you're looking at, well, you, you could bump that up to 100% chance of rain now as the rain has been coming down really just a few minutes before the start of game time and the uh, rain has started to fall. Let's take a look at our key keys to the game in this one. First of all, for Faraday, Jason DeQuare has joined me here in the broadcast booth straight off his uh, airplane, not his airplane, but his uh, <laughs> flight back to uh, Louisiana. Start, take it away, Jason. Thank you, Jeff. Good to be here. Of course, for Faraday, they need to stay focused. Big game. Establish the run. That's going to be the real focal point of this offense. And then they have to get after Gilmore. He's a great quarterback for Amit. And then on for Amit, they need to set the edge on defense, try to prevent the quarterback from escaping, control the tempo on offense, and just stay away from the dumb penalties. How many times do we say that, Jeff? Yeah, certainly for Amit. Amit, I mentioned it right before the first break. They're 12-1 and one on the season. They lost the season opener to Country Day 24-23. to 23. They have not really been challenged since then. Stanley Smith in his second season as the head coach of the Faraday Trojans, 21-6. and six. He's a former defensive coordinator at Franklin Parish. He's also coached on the college level at Arkansas Pine Bluff. He played at Faraday, and in 2000, he was the Concordia Parish Player of the Year when he had 155 tackles during his senior season. And the Amy Warriors, their head coach, Zephaniah Powell, named the Louisiana Sports Writers Association Class 3A Coach of the Year a couple of seasons ago when he led the Warriors to the Class 3A state championship game. He's 42 and 13 here at Amy, and he's got a talented squad. So Faraday won the toss, they deferred, and Amy will receive. So we'll get to see that Warriors offense, and they got two really good return men. There you look at Cameron Henderson, and then, of course, Devon. Monte Lee on the other side. We are looking forward to this one, our final broadcast of the 2018 season here on Yearview. And it's great to be in Tangibahoa Parish and to see these two teams go at it here tonight. Amy, the number two seed. Faraday, the number three seed. Byron Milligan has it teed up for the Faraday Trojans who come in with a record of 10 and three, and we are underway, a bit of an onside kick there, and it looks like Faraday has the football. At least that's the way it looks from the uh, Trojans' point of view. Now there is a flag down as well. Jason, you're a former kicker. Did he mean to do that? That's what I was getting ready to say. It looked like he just mishit the ball. He's a straight on kicker. And so you're going to be kicking it with your toe. And I think he just got the side of the football and probably, you know, shocked the, <laughs> their team as much as it did Amy. Our officials tonight are from New Orleans and they've been put to work right away. One second into this game. And the flag came late, so I'm wondering if there was some activity on the sideline, but sometimes you'll see touching before it goes 10 yards as well when it's not expected. A kick out of bounds. The receiving team touched the ball, causing it to go out of bounds. We'll play first down. So I think then that means it's Amy's football then. That yeah. they never recovered it. Yeah, I think he was he was trying to. I mean, if you could do that intentionally, it's a heck of an onside kick. But yeah. I think by the time the ball was uh, eventually recovered, it's out of bounds there. Actually, it was never recovered and rolled out. So great field position for the Amy Warriors. Tough break there for the Faraday Trojans and their head coach, Stanley Smith, unable to get on that. Not so much of an onside kick, accidental onside kick. Amani Gilmore, he is committed to Kentucky. Good passing numbers for him, good rushing numbers, very even keel. That is what Amy head coach Zephaniah Powell loves about the guy. And they will run it and in the backfield right away for Faraday. Keandre Thompson, a loss of a yard as the Trojans have come to play here tonight. And now we have some whistles here. Let's see what this is all about. Another sideline warning, I think, going to be called sideline on. Sideline warning, Faraday, that's their first sideline warning. 
I tell you what, Jeff, walking in here, I know I was walking here right as the game started, but they are packed in here. They are still trying to get in here, and I tell you what, there's a lot of excitement going on, which is probably why you have some of these sideline warnings early in the game. Well, they are, they are lined up along the fences here. Everybody's got their umbrellas out. We'll see how much this rain is a factor. A meet one last week against Franklin, 40, 48 to nothing. Faraday, they beat St. Helena, 26-21. Gilmore will throw for the first time. Over the middle and incomplete. Way over the head of the receiver, Cameron Henderson. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for the Amy Warriors. Their running back is Corey McKnight, over 1,400 yards rushing for him. Devontae Lee, Cameron Henderson, Dorian Batiste, and Kyle Maxwell. The offensive line, Dakota Cox is the center. Ruben Richardson, Hezekiah Neeson, Stanley Williams Jr., and Dominic Lang. This is an offense averaging 47 points a game. And look what they have done in the postseason. They have outscored their opponents 140, 140 to six. Their offensive line led by Dakota Cox, a Louisiana college recruit. Pass complete to Devontae Lee and they are all over him. And it looks like it's gonna be a three and out for Amy's offense as Faraday shuts down Devontae Lee, one of the top wide receivers in the country. And we'll see the punt unit for Amy right away. And that's a big victory for this Faraday defense considering you gave the ball up on a botched onside kick at almost midfield and you talked about how explosive this Amy offense is. So that's a that's a big victory, early victory there for Faraday. Ladarius Armin is your punter for the Amy Warriors. You can't imagine that they've punted too much tonight or this season. And it's a high punt, not bad at all. This is gonna bounce it to 20. And it's going to roll dead at the 14-yard line, and that's where the Faraday Trojans will start. 33-yard punt. And let's see what Faraday could do offensively. This is a Faraday team that was in the semifinals last year. As you look at their quarterback, Kobe Dillon, a six foot, 190 pound junior. He's completed 57% of his passes for over 1,500 yards, 19 touchdowns, two interceptions. He got hurt in the first game of the season and he missed three and a half games. But when he returned, Faraday's offense took off. Trojans from their own 18 on their opening drive of the night. And they're gonna run a jet sweep as they hand the ball off to Jamie and Green trying to get around the edge. He might have gotten a yard or two, and that's about it. Yeah, both of these clubs have two really exciting quarterbacks, exciting to see what they're going to do tonight. Well, they give them about three there for Jamie and Green, who's a, a track guy for the Faraday Trojans. As you look at Kobe Dillon, he also is a track standout, plays basketball. But Faraday will want to run the ball as there is a offsides penalty, it looks like. Jumping the gun was James McGowan. Number 22, defense. So a five-yard penalty, and Coach Zephaniah Powell said he wanted to stay away from the dumb penalties, and that one's not a smart penalty. I don't know if it's necessarily dumb, but it's not yeah. a smart penalty. Well, it puts him in a much shorter situation. Second down, open up the playbook a little bit here. Dylan takes the snap, and here is their standout running back, Damon Ye Milligan. And he gets stopped short of the first down. Let's take a look at Faraday's starting lineup. So Milligan, also known as Ty Ty Milligan, Blake Tarver, Jamie Green, Justin Burns, Elijah White. On that offensive line, the main guy there is the center, the sophomore, Vincent Howlands. Strong and stout, 5'11", 285 pounds. Three seniors on that O-line, Larry Scott, Derek Shepard, and Jontez Curry. Henry Thomas is a 6'1", junior. On third down, they pick up the first down with Kobe Dillon running the ball up to the 33-yard line, and they'll move the chains as they convert, getting 10 yards as you take a look at Vincent Howlands. Well, it just opens up here, and again, you get to see Dylan's running ability there, and I thought maybe almost a helmet to helmet right there at the end. I know that's what had people fired up right there, but very fortunate that another 15 wasn't tacked on. 
First down and 10 at the 33 yard line. As Dillon surveys the defense. Play action fake, has to get out of the pocket. And he throws it and incomplete and in a big hit applied there by Devontae Lee on the intended receiver, which was Kylan Lewis. Well, Dylan does a good job escaping, but I don't think he saw the late blitzer there and just doesn't get much on the ball. And, you know, when you float them out there to your wide receivers like that, you can almost expect a big hit is on the way. How about the speed there from Marlon Art to chase down Kobe Dillon, the quarterback? Coach Zephaniah Powell, as you take a look at Devontae Lee, plays both ways, 2A football. You'll see a lot of guys go both ways tonight. But Zephaniah Powell had told me Art's got Olympic speed. He looked like he had it there. Not much running room, and Art could come up and hit you as well. That was a big time hit from the five foot eight senior, a loss of two, and it's third and long. Let's take a look at the Warriors defense. The starting lineup for them, the defensive coordinator is Chris Gordon. They've given up just 64 points all season long. Of course, their main guy is Ishmael Sopsher, the top defensive tackle in the country. Their leading tackler, though, is Quadri Jackson, who's been a starter since his sophomore season. And then Darren Branch, number 21, he's the next big recruit from Amy. He's a junior, Auburn, Ole Miss, and several other SEC schools taking a look at him. And then everybody Everybody in the country is looking at Devontae Lee. Timeout called by Faraday. With 8.15 to go in the first quarter. Terrific job Stanley Smith is doing with this Faraday team. He's got third down at 12, wants to make sure they don't make a big mistake here. We'll take our first break during regulation. More of game time coming up. Tonight's game time keys to the game are brought to you by West Feliciana Parish, where you really can have it all. The best place for you to live and work in South Louisiana is West Feliciana Parish. Check out WFParish.org. Welcome to Monogram Express, a unique embroidery boutique specializing in personalized and one-of-a-kind gift ideas. Gifts for babies, children, ladies, and even men, we have you covered. Equipped with state-of-the-art embroidery machines, along with an experienced client-focused staff serving you six days a week. Check out the area's largest selection of letters, designs, and thread colors. We're your one-stop embroidery shop. Handling personal, corporate, team, and school logos, and you're welcome to bring in your own items. Conveniently located at 2109 Veterans. Monogram Express makes your ordinary gifts extraordinary. Tonight's game time starting lineups are brought to you by Peak Performance. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete and everyone stronger, faster, better. Choose Peak. Third down and 12, the rain has stopped falling here, or maybe a few drops, but uh, every now and then we get a little big shower coming through. Hopefully the severe stuff stays away. Opening drive here for Faraday, and they wanted to do a little misdirection, and now getting out of there is Kobe Dillon. Dillon, he's got the first down and more. And Dillon all the way into Amy territory up to the 46 yard line. Wow, I'll tell you what. This is just all Dylan right here. You can see a couple of play fakes at the at the at the beginning here, trying to kind of confuse a meet, and none of that stuff worked and didn't open up. And then Dylan just takes matters in his own hands and shows you his speed and elusive runner in the open field. Finally brought down by Darren Branch, a big third down pickup, and now Faraday's two for two on third downs. Jeff, I hate to tell you what a big quarterback like that that wears number four looks like. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of old Dak Prescott. Six foot, 190 pounds. He looks bigger than that, though. There's a pass in. Incomplete off the hands of the receiver. Lucky it was an interception for Faraday. So it was bounced off the hands of Justin Burns. On the coverage there was Kyle Maxwell for the Warriors. Last week, Amy, they held... Franklin to negative 38 yards rushing in their quarterfinal game. And then Franklin, all they can have was 35 yards passing. Amy, this defense has shut out five opponents this year. They go to the ground and not much running room there. Maybe a yard or two. Ball comes out at the end, but I believe he was down. Oh, and then some 
little extra stuff there as well. Yeah, they're chippy out there. I mean, this is a this is a big game. Got big time players all over. But watch Big Sopcher here. Watch him just completely turn him around with one hand there. And really, that's what that's what slowed that play down there. He, he was able to capture Milligan, wasn't able to tackle him. And then you see some of the, the extra stuff. They've been chippy just about after every play here. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number eight of the offense, 15 yard penalty, will replay second down. Yeah, they got Milligan there, and probably a little frustration when Sopcher got him initially. Yeah, you can't. Uh... That, that's, that's a 15-yard penalty. I understand he's on top of you, but you can't do that. Got to keep your composure. So now it's third down and long here for the Trojans. Third down and 23. Byron Milligan, the man who uh, got the carry there and ended up committing a 15-yard penalty. Now we have another whistle. And do we got a flag on the far side? Nope, they just wanted to have a brief conversation, make sure they got the ball spotted right, maybe make sure they got the down right. That, of course, happened after the play. From the 40-yard line here. And I yeah. think Amy was offsides. I think Sapcher got a little bit of a head start there. Way too much TV time for our officials yeah. tonight. After the snap, encroachment, number 91 defense, yeah. five-yard penalty, it remains third down. Yeah, early, early start, they've been active. I'm wondering if that's the rain on the referee or just sweating for making <laughs> so many, having to work so hard at the beginning of the game, but you can see here, right at the right of your screen, well, that's, I don't know. I uh, think he's he lined, lined up, up offside. He yeah. looked like he lined up It's hard offside. to see that angle on, on TV, but, uh, you know, he probably was lined up off. Now from the 45-yard line, the man in motion there is Elijah White, who has really come along as the season has gone along. Dylan's got all day to throw. Now dumps it off. And there's Byron Milligan. Milligan showing some elusiveness and gets down to the 40-yard line. I think you got to go for it here, Jason. Yeah, I think this is sort of in And there's a flag, yeah. though, back in the backfield. And where that's My thrown, God. that may not be good. But you can see here, Dylan, a little confusion there with the quarterback. Supposed to be a sort of an option. But Milligan frees himself and does a good job moving around out there in the open field. Almost picks up the first down, but I think this one may be coming back. Yeah, Henry Thomas. You want to back him up? Number 58. Henry Thomas tackled a defender. Holding. Number 58. Offense. 10-yard penalty. Replay third down. Now, this Faraday offensive line, they've played some 5A schools this season. They've played LaGrange, they've played Alexandria, they played up, played Franklin Parish. But this is not your ordinary Class 2A defensive line they're going up against. No, no, these are some big boys <laughs> out here. I mean, Sapsher is huge. We all know that. Shamar Buckley is 275. Larry Woolridge is also a, a big guy, number 90. Uh, now we've got another flag out here. I'm wondering if they're going to get the coach. Um, but he threw it right no, there. Another, you got another sideline yeah. warning. He threw it right there at hey, the me. coach. Say it first. So we've uh, gone through our sideline warning, so we're all done with it. Everybody's been warned. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And I get what the refs are trying to do. They're trying to keep a tight lid on this thing. I mean, this is going to be a very competitive, chippy game. And, you know, from the sidelines to the after the play antics, I think they're just trying to get a lid on it early. Third down and 33. Here's the pass to Elijah White. White gets a block and then is tripped up over the middle of the field. Brought down by Quadri Jackson, the three-year starter. And Faraday will finally puck the football after all of that. And Byron Milligan handling the punting will line up and Cameron Henderson back to return for the Warriors. Milligan's punt, it's a line drive punt and it'll bounce and die somewhere around the 30 yard line. That is a 32 yard punt. And A meets offense back out on the field. 
So Amit last year, they lost in the quarterfinals to St. Helena 35-32. St. Helena went on to play in the state championship game after beating Faraday in a tight game 12-6 last year. And then St. Helena ended up losing to Welsh. Welsh in the semifinals as well. And they are taking Iota tonight. That's the other matchup on the 2A side as you look at Dakota Cox. The top player on that offensive line for the Warriors, averaging 47 points a game. They've scored 40 or more points in all but three games. Gilmore keeps it, and he gets about six yards. As Larry Scott, who is their top player on defense, made the tackle. We have not introduced you to the Trojan starting lineup on defense. Kylan Lewis is a good one, only a sophomore. Keandre Thompson, Blake Tarver. The linebackers, Devin Bird has 133 tackles. Not much happening on the second down run for Corey McKnight as he was covered up by Henry Thomas. And then in the defensive secondary, Deontay Dishta. He'll be a guy that you'll hear a lot about tonight, a senior back there in the secondary for the Trojans. This is a team that uh, really rallies to the football. And when we had a chance to talk with Coach Zephaniah Powell for Amy earlier this week, he was impressed at just the team speed that Faraday possesses. Third and four, Gilmore dumps it off. Corey McKnight, and McKnight is not going to get the first down. How about that? As the Trojans showing how they can fly to the football, Damian Milligan there yeah. on the tackle. Good job there by Faraday, bringing hats to the ball. And the, 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 what makes this play good is defender here just breaks down. He doesn't he doesn't allow him to make the move on him initially to pick up the first down. And once you do that, you slow that running back up. Then you got the rest of your gang coming along to help you bring him down. Out back to punt for Amy. And it's Ladarius Arman. Special teams are going to be huge in uh -oh. this game, and the snap is over his head. And he is going to be brought down all the way at the 12-yard line. First big break in the game goes to the Faraday Trojans. Wow, what a miscue. And particularly, you know, deep in your own territory, and really the punter never had a chance at this ball. It just kind of slowly sails over his head there. And... <laughs> You know, by the time he gets it, there's nowhere to go. You got to at least try to, I mean, kick it with your left foot or something. Try to get that ball off. But We're talking about an <laughs> offensive lineman here. Yeah. yeah, but he scooped it pretty good. <laughs> Timeout called by Amy. 4.04 left and Faraday ready to strike first in this game. Let's go down to the sidelines and smack her miles. Jeff, this is not Coach Smith's first time at Faraday. He actually graduated high school from Faraday, so he played on their football team when he was in high school. Then he went to ULL to play football, came back to Faraday to start his coaching career, then took a few other jobs, and now he's back at Faraday as the head coach. So this is really a full circle season for him. And he said as a child, he always wanted to go to the Dome. So this could be a special night for him. Jeff? Certainly can. And then while he was over at Louisiana College as an assistant coach, he actually was the head men's and women's tennis coach for Louisiana College and said, I just watched some videos, talked to some people. And <laughs> there it was. <laughs> <laughs> they needed some help. Figured a, he was a young guy. He still is a young guy and looking to make a little extra cash. And there he was, coaching tennis. Producing John McEnroe's, huh? <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's the handoff and nothing doing at all from Damon Yeh Milligan. So there's Damian Milligan and Damon Yeh. They call him Ty Ty. So if we start referring to number 34 as Ty Ty, we, that's, we might just go with that. A loss of three yards there. There are Milligans all over this roster here. Yes, there are. Second and 13 here is the Warriors defense looking to stand strong. Two running backs in the backfield once again as they are inside the West Feliciana Parish red zone. Nice run there for 
seven or eight or so, and that was Ty Ty Milligan. He's a sophomore with four or five speed, big numbers on the season for Milligan, 1,500 yards rushing. And here are the tough yards right here. I mean, not a super big guy, but not afraid to get in there and mix it up. And, you know, he kind of drags some big folks with him to pick up valuable yardage down here. Third down and eight coming up now. As you look at that, 11.4 average and 28 touchdowns. The pass, and it is incomplete. Good coverage. Defensively for Amy. That was Cameron Henderson all over the intended receiver. Yeah, great coverage. Tries a small window to sneak that little slant in there and almost a, a great throw in catch, but had to be perfect because the coverage was just blanking it. Well, Faraday will go for it on fourth down. This is where a lack of a kicker hurts you a little bit. Boy, they got a great opportunity here. They would hate to let this go by. Fourth and eight, Dylan rolling out. Dylan's going to try to keep him in himself, and he is brought down at the five. Darren Branch and Amy, which has given up just 64 points all season. It's still 64 points all season, despite Faraday starting that drive at the 12-yard line. Well, big-time tackle stopping from picking up the first down, but here I think Dylan got a little indecisive. He should have just gone ahead and kept that ball and made up his mind earlier when he was rolling out, and he may have been able to pick it up, but when he slowed up a little bit, it allowed the defense there to corral him. So now Amy will start deep in its own end. First down and 10 at the five, their third drive of the night. Did not think we would have a scoreless first quarter here tonight, Jason, but we might be staring at that, it, especially with this Warriors offense, which has been so good all season long, led by their star quarterback, Amani Gilmore. And they hand it off here, and this is going to be a first down for the Warriors. As Gilmore actually kept it himself for a first down. I tell you what, Kentucky's going to be getting a special athlete because he's a true dual threat guy. I mean, he's not just an athlete back there running around, but initially you, you'll be able to see his running ability here and how quick he is, but he can really sling the football as well. One of the reasons why is they run it on first down again, get about five or six. One of the reasons why Gilmore has committed to Kentucky is that he wants to play quarterback at the next level, and the Wildcats, they they want him as a quarterback. And they got another quarterback in that re same recruiting class with Gilmore that I saw ended up uh, suffering a season ending injury. Second down and five as Gilmore playing in his final home game at A. Mead High School, a transfer from Hammond High School. And look at that, showing a little physicality, trying to run over the defender, Larry Scott. We'll see if it's enough for a first down. Yeah, I bet you some of this will stop when he gets to the SEC, but he here at this level, he shows you I'm not afraid, even though I play quarterback. And wow, he just ran over the defender right there. Well, Larry Scott, he might be a future so SEC player too. Yeah. Arkansas, Georgia, a couple of the schools that are taking a look at him. He's a five foot 11, 225 pound senior is Larry Scott with 121 tackles on the air from the 26 and only a couple of yards that time for Amy as that play was shut down right from the start as they ran it with Cameron Henderson. And you can see on your screen, it looks like the rain is coming back here. The umbrellas are back out. It's gonna be somewhat of a sloppy night. Just keep that severe weather away. Yes. That's for sure. Second down and eight. Looking to throw, going deep. This is to Devante Lane. It's too far for him. There were three. Trojan defenders around the top prospect. LSU, Alabama, you name it. They are after Devontae Lee. Let's watch this throw here from Gilmore. Yeah, and there wasn't really a crisp route right there. Not sure what was the design, just a fly pattern perhaps, but it just wasn't a crisp route and no real separation there at that point. They had a couple defenders. And look, they're going to be playing him over the top. You better be, you know, you better know that wherever seven lines up, they're going to they're gonna probably bring some safety help. It will be a tough assignment for Damian Milligan, who's on him. 
On third down, there's a completion, and there's a touchdown. Nobody's going to catch him. Dorian Batiste into the end zone, 72 yards. Wow, what a throw here by Gilmore. I mean, this thing here is just a bullet right in the zone. That time, he caught Faraday in the zone, and he just throws a bullet right in there to Baptiste, and Baptiste with his speed does the rest. I don't think he was touched. Watch, you'll see here, Faraday's kind of in a zone, and Gilmore recognizes it, just throws a bullet wow. right in between two defenders, and Baptiste doesn't even get touched, and that's all because of the throw that Gilmore had. It was so accurate right in the middle of that zone, he could run with it after the catch. A bad snap, and now running with the football is Henderson. He's going to throw, and what a grab! He caught it from behind. Spectacular two-point conversion for Jave Gilmore. How about that? Look at those long arms and big hands. That's a heck of a snag. And that's not how they designed that extra point attempt. Well, they seem like they knew exactly what to do. Yeah. Well, wow. You call that fire. <laughs> that's what you call. <laughs> I, I think he was trying to throw the uh, football yeah. to Kevin Beck Bickham in the back of the end zone. But Gilmore, Gilmore who's listed as a linebacker uh, yeah. on the roster, just uh, put hey, the I big ball out. Let's take a look at this touchdown catch by Baptiste and the mustard that Gilmore puts on this football. Yeah, he just flat out. Watch how accurate this throws right there in the zone. I mean, just hits him right there in the numbers and allows Baptiste to be able to run after the catch. And that's why it's so important to throw accurate footballs because it allows your receivers to do that with it if it's thrown accurately. I'll tell you what, if he didn't catch it, I think it would have <laughs> stuck right in his face that. That yeah. was a spiral there, and it's eight to nothing. As you take a look at the Pondas barbecue scoring drive, six plays, 95 yards, a big turn there. Faraday had the football at the Amy 12 after the bad snap on the punt. They can't get into the end zone, and all of a sudden it's seven back the other way. On the return, this is Ty Ty, and he gets all the way to the 22, 23 yard line for Milligan. Well, Gilmore got going on the last drive. Let's see if Dylan can come in and show that he can move his team down the field as well. 49 seconds in this opening quarter from Amit High School. The Warriors, they have won four state championships during their proud history. Haven't won one in a while, though. 2004, the last time they've won a state championship. The other titles were in 99, 94, and all the way back in 1963. You got to go back to the 50s. Last time Faraday has won a state championship. On a bit of a delay there and nothing happening as it was all bottled up in the middle. James McGowan, along with Larry Woolridge, they were all there. Hardly any running room. I believe that was Byron Milligan on the carry. Yeah, and unlike Amit, you know, Faraday really wants to get their run game going. Not that Amit doesn't, but you can kind of just drop Gilmore back there in the spread and let him do what he does and operate, as you saw in the last drive. Faraday likes to try to be a little bit more methodical and get some of these running backs going. Dylan, here comes Sopcher, and he fumbled the football. Picked up by Milligan, and he's going to go down for a loss. I think they forgot the block number 91, and that is a cardinal mistake. Yeah, he got back there quickly. And that's one guy that you cannot leave alone. In fact, you probably need to bring some help most times. Look, unblocked. Yeah, just, Forget yeah. that. <laughs> and remember, the conditions are wet, so you got to try to protect the football ball. Slips out. Fortunate they didn't turn it over right there. A loss of seven as the momentum is in the favor of the A Meat Warriors. As they lead Faraday after one quarter of play here from Tangibahoa Parish. We'll have more of game time on your view when we come back. It's the class 2A semifinals. Get ready. This one should be a good one all the way to the end. Hey, Joe Martin here. You've seen our commercials over the years, and you may be wondering, what's in it for me? Well, ITI Technical College has been selected by Forbes magazine as a top 32-year college 
But even more than that, the reason we do this is you. Our tagline is for a better life, and we mean that for you to be able to have the life you've always dreamed about, to do the things for your family you've always dreamed about. And it can begin here where we are dedicated to your success because here at ITI, the reason we do it is you. I'm Brett Favre. As a quarterback in the NFL, if I didn't stay focused, I ended up on my back or worse. Even the smallest distraction could make a good play or offensive drive come to an end. When you're in a car, the smallest distraction could end much more than a drive. It could end someone's life. Just like I refuse to lose on the field, I refuse to lose someone I love to distract and drive them. And you should too. Focus on the road. Don't drive distracted. A message from Farm Bureau Insurance. Come enjoy a great location just minutes away from the hustle and bustle of the city at Suma Lake Apartments. Experience luxurious living with all appliances included, granite countertops, and walk-in closets. Relax in a peaceful environment by the pool or enjoy fishing in a nine-acre lake. Kids are sure to enjoy the playground and basketball court. Located in Livingston Parish in a great school district. Call today, 225-686-1111. Begin the second quarter from Amy High School. Jeff Palermo, Jason DeQuer, and Smacker Miles down on the sidelines as the rain has stopped. Faraday facing another third down and long. Dylan getting out of the pocket. This has been their best offense all night, him running the ball, and he is brought down. Uh -oh. And he is slow to get up. Yeah, he started grabbing a hammy, and he just, okay, it looks like he's all right because that is, you can't have Dylan go down. No, nope, he's the main guy, their quarterback, and right Looks now like they got to try to get something going offensively here as Amy has shut them down. Well, and they need to get their run game going. I mean, that's the, really the bread and butter, and, 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 and Dylan is a part of it, but they were, oh, no, another bad snap. And here. that's going to be another two points here as that one goes over the head of the punter, and all of a sudden it's 10 to nothing, Amy. I'll tell you what, the uh, special teams have been sloppy on both sides. Started off with a botched kickoff. Well, you're playing on dead, wet grass. It can't be easy to snap as we take a look at the replay here. Second high snap here. We saw a meet with the high snap earlier. Here's Faraday, and unfortunate for them, it went through the back of the end zone. So, as you mentioned, they've given up another two points here. So it was a good start for Faraday. They were moving the ball. They had a couple of three and outs defensively, and all of a sudden, A. Meets has uh, arisen here, and they have built a 10 0 lead. And the confidence is pretty high on the Warriors' sidelines. A. Meets started their playoff run, beating Springfield 51 0, then beat East Feliciana 41 6 in the second round, and then Wallop Franklin, who was a 23 seed in the quarterfinals, as you look at Coach Zephaniah Powell, former Jules Sumner head coach. So they're trying to adjust the kickoff team. They went out and lined up in their normal kickoff spots, but the ball is being kicked off from the 20 yard line. So they weren't even in position to receive the football. Those coaches are screaming at him, trying to get him in the right position here. Devontae Lee and Cameron Henderson ready to return as Byron Milligan has it teed up and another squibber there and it goes out of bounds at the 45. Well, this is going to be tremendous field position for Amy. And again, I, that's not intentional. That's why you see him throwing the tee. That is not how he's trying to kick this ball off. He's trying to just square up and hit it with his toe. But that ball, he's hitting on the side of it. That's why it comes off in that spiral formation. Watch here. I mean, he is trying to kick this thing down the field. You hit just on the side of it. Boom. And it just, it's a perfectly thrown spiral there. Yeah. <laughs> So they mark it at the 35. That's where Amy will take over. Yeah, they're gonna have to settle down here. I mean, a lot of miscues on special teams and, you know, offense kind of went backwards there and they had some early penalties. They had a good drive going uh, earlier in the first quarter and then it was uh, victimized by penalties. Gilmore will throw Ooh. it and whoa, that was dangerous Barry. there. 
as all over it was Damian Milligan as catching the football was Cameron Henderson and he was brought down and he loses a yard. I think if you call Milligan, you got a good chance of having the right guy. But here, <laughs> here, here's Milligan. I mean, he, he really should, Gilmore should not have thrown that football. Milligan didn't have to do much. It was almost thrown right to him. Ball at the 36 yard line. Three down linemen here for Faraday. Gilmore nearly had his pass intercepted as jumping up and swatting it was Henry Thomas. Yeah, that ball was almost picked. Trying to get a little crossing route in there. Trying to sneak a crossing route in there to Maxwell. You'll see eight come across your screen right there and trying to sneak it in there and did not see Thomas right there in his screen. Third down and 11. Thomas is a six, is a six foot one junior. So Devontae Lee, he's lined up in the slot towards the top of your screen. Let's see if they get the ball here to number seven. Under pressure. And taking off with it is Gilmore. And Gilmore wow. is going to be stopped a very close to the first down marker. Henry Thomas chased him down. Thomas showing some great speed there to keep up with Gilmore. That, this is an unbelievable play by Thomas with his size and how fast Gilmore is. Watch him turn on the Jets and go get him. I tell you what, that's the kind of stuff you want to put on your, on your highlight reel. There is a flag down in the... All the way on the far side of the field in front of the Faraday bench. There is no foul with an eligible man downfield. It was a running play. I think Gilmore was shocked when he looked around and behind him and realized who had caught him. He's not used to that, but that's just unbelievable foot speed right there to go and get Gilmore. Well, let's see, did he stop him shy of a first down? Looks like it's a 10-yard run, fourth down. Gilmore gets underneath center. They run the quarterback sneak, and they got the first down. And Gilmore still staying on his feet all the way to the 13-yard line. Well, this time I think they caught Faraday off guard here because normally they line up in the shotgun, but then they quickly went up and lined up under center and just got into the right gap, and they, they recognized it and able to convert there, not only convert, but able to pick up a lot of yardage just on a simple quarterback sneak. 12 yard run. Now they hand the football off and right up the middle for Cameron Henderson. Covered up by Larry Scott. Gain of maybe four. The Henderson's losing part of his helmet there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't think he cares. And that's their do it all guy. I mean, he can line up. He can compliment the receivers. He can compliment the running backs. And he's got a ton of speed as well. And an outstanding baseball player. Could be a high draft pick. As he's lightning in the bottle, according to Coach Zephaniah Powell. Second down and six. The ball goes to Corey McKnight here. And McKnight for a couple before the Trojans tackle. This is a big defensive drive here for Faraday. If they can keep Amit out of the end zone. Third down and five. The Warriors are one for four on third down attempts tonight. As you look at Henry Thomas huffing and puffing, playing both ways tonight on the defensive and offensive lines. Well, and I'd have somebody spy Gilmore. I would not let him just go out and get the five yards by himself. And there, there he goes. And he but is yeah. towards the end zone. And it's in for a – nope, they call him down at the one. Well, you can almost smell that coming. I mean, because you, you're thinking they're going to have two downs to try to pick up the first down anyway. And third and five, they're just going to put it in one of their better running back's hands, which is their quarterback. So another quarterback sneak could be coming up here inside the ITI Technical College red zone, and it's touchdown Warriors. As they have taken a 16 to nothing lead, Gilmore running it in that time. He's got a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown. Well, again, just miscues by Faraday. Remember what led this is a bad snap on a punt. Amy picks up two points there, and then they finish the finish it off. So let's see if this extra point will not be as eventful <laughs> as the first one. Henderson, you do it all, guys. The holder there. He's the one who threw 
the two point conversion. And the extra point looks to be good by Liam Adamson. Let's take a look at the first run here by Gilmore on third down. Showing some elusiveness. Gets all the way to the one yard line and then it was easy from there on the quarterback sneak even though Faraday was ready for it. Gets a little help from his offensive line, Ruben Richardson, the guard, making sure that Gilmore gets into the end zone. A little friendly nudge, push across that goal line. Good job there by Gilmore. You get a good look at him, see the rain still coming down, but right now it's advantage Gilmore and this a meat offense. And for Faraday, this is a drive where they have to answer. Darius Armin will have it teed up here. They almost kicked the last one over the return folks' head, so they got to be able to put a little bit on it here. High end over end kick taken at the eight yard line. And Ty Ty Milligan bouncing off a tackler and then he got hit hard at the 33 yard line. As you look at our crown trophy scoring drive, Amani Gilmore getting into the end zone. Just a smart quarterback, transferred in from Hammond. He did not play last season to Gilmore as he had to sit out for because of the transfer rules. And so far tonight, seven rushes, 52 yards, but Zephaniah Powell said he learned how to win while watching for a season coming from Hammond, which has not had much success lately, even though Hammond did get into the Class 5A playoffs this season for the first time in over a decade. He's just a good looking athlete. Kobe Dillon barking out the signals oh, and he can't handle oh, the snap. It, Ball it. on the ground, it's Warriors football. Oh, Big turnover as Marlon Ard gets in there and recovers it and it's just falling apart right now for the Trojans. This thing is just unraveling, but good heads up play there by me with the loose ball. This is one that Dillon, it's a little high, but he should have been able to handle. Remember the ball's wet, had a little heat on it, but uh, just unable to get control of it. And by the time it hits the ground, a meet is all over it. Vincent Hollins, you're right, had some extra hot sauce on that one. Boy, oh boy, boy, their back is against the wall now. And, you know, we mentioned they needed to try to keep him out of the end zone last drive. You, you got to find a way to, to not let them score here. Warriors offense back on the field. Amani Gilmore takes a look at the defense. He'll throw the left-hander towards the, the end zone. What a great adjustment on the ball. Touchdown, Warriors. Well, you can see this one coming. And he had Maxwell in the slot. And really, Gilmore could have let this ball go a little bit earlier, but because he let it go a little late, it caused Maxwell to have to go up and make a great play. But you, you can't see him. He's right on the right side of your screen there, and he had him open all the way. Match up on a linebacker. Maxwell's going to win that every time. And a good adjustment up in the air, showing his athletic ability to go up and snag that one. He's a three-star recruit committed to Louisiana Tech. 22-yard touchdown passes. Amani Gilmore, the Kentucky commitment, having a big game. Two TD passes and a rushing touchdown. And out for the extra point, Liam Adamson. And that is through the uprights. All a meet right now in Tangibahoa Parish. The Warriors leading the Faraday Trojans. 24 to nothing as Amani Gilmore, the senior QB, playing well. Tonight's game time starting lineups are brought to you by ITI Technical College, your key to a better life. Check out the stories behind the games. Visit yourview.com slash Louisiana. People that come to a craftsmanship, Crips Incorporated for every roof or sheet metal job. We're gonna do the best, and here's the proof. For more than 50 years, our name stood above the rest. Look up and you'll probably find Crips Incorporated quality. People look up to our craftsmanship, Crips Incorporated. 
Tonight's Game Time Keys to the Game are brought to you by Podna's Barbecue. Slow cooked, fall off the bone, perfection, and the best baked beans in America. For more Game Time High School football coverage, check out yourview.com. A lot of dancing, a lot of smiles, a lot of excitement on the Amy sidelines as they are up 24 nothing on Faraday. Yeah, they're partying over there, but look, can't get complacent. Faraday's got some athletes. Get right back in this thing. Ladarius Armin has it teed up. Uh, Armin takes a... I mean, he runs like a marathon before he gets to the football here. Look how far back before he finally comes up and kicks it. He does a good job with it, although that one goes out right of bounds, there, yeah. You know, whatever you. But he had had some pretty good deep kickoffs. There's been some miscues in this football game, mainly on the Faraday side, but this was the first big one from A. Mead as the punt sails over the punter's head. But the Warriors defense does not allow Faraday to score, and then yeah, the uh, snap has been an issue here tonight. Yeah, special teams play has been ugly. It's, uh, you know, a lot of botched plays and the other thing too is, you know, I think both of these teams started out with some early nerves. It's a big game, packed house, standing room only. Well, now Amy, they're rolling. They've scored 24 points in the last six minutes and nine seconds. Well, here's where you got to put something together. They go to Ty Ty Milligan. Can he get to the outside? The Warriors are all over him, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Quadri Jackson. Well, it's a good job. Uh, the defenders out there on the edge, not losing their gap assignment and able to bring him down, stretching it out. Loss of four, let's go down and no. Well, second down and 14. Coming up on the eight minute mark before halftime. Dylan needs to make something happen here. He'll keep it, and he's got some room to run. And Dylan continues to be the best offensive player of the night for Faraday. He got about 10 there. Let's go down to the sidelines and smack her miles. Guys, Amy's motto this year has been Amy excellence. And Coach Powell said it's about much more than the dominant football we're seeing right now. He wants these guys to learn how to be men and have success off the football field. He says he teaches them how to tie ties and make good resumes and learn interviewing skills. So these guys are getting a lot more than coaching just on the football field. Third down, Dylan keeping it, and I think he's got enough for the first down. That was a big third down pickup there for Faraday. They're now three for six on third down conversions. And again, Dylan really the only thing working for them offensively. Yeah, and they need to build off of this. They're moving the chains here. As you can see, two consecutive plays in a row. The read option, he keeps it, gets up the middle. And they got to build off of this. And the other thing, they're keeping that hot A-meet offense on the sidelines for a little while. Dylan trying to get his teammates fired up. Amy calls timeout as I'm sure they want to sit there and talk about, hey, we got to stop number four here. If they can contain number four, they got a good chance. Check out the Over the Middle podcast with recruiting guru Jeremy Crabtree. You can go to yearview.com as uh, on this week's Yearview's high school football recruiting podcast. The silly season is causing havoc on the national recruiting trail with the early signing period rapidly approaching. In our final podcast before the early signing period opens December 19th, Jeremy is joined by Greg Biggins of 247sports.com to break down why so many prospects will opt to sign early while Oregon's class is so good and whether Chip Kelly's unique recruiting approach will work. All that and more on this week's episode of Over the Middle Podcast. You can check it out at yearview.com. The umbrella is still out here, first down and 10, and nothing happening on this run. Maybe a yard, that's about it. They cannot get Ty Ty Milligan going right now, and this is a guy over 1,500 yards rushing. He's a sophomore, 
but as a kid that is a slasher, makes good catches or good cuts, and he's probably a future power five running back, but so far he's been held in check. Six carries for negative one yard so far tonight. Well, something's going to have to give. I mean, a meets really their, their strength is that defensive line, which stops you holding it down. And for Faraday, they want to get their running game going in those lanes. Dylan wants to throw on second down, and I think that's complete. And it is. Nice grab on the far sidelines by Jamie and Green making the grab. Ten yards and another first down here for the Trojans. Well, and number 12, Jamie and Green, I think he's another critical piece to this offense. And, you know, if he can start making some catches and connecting with Dylan, I think they can they can work their way back in here. But you see Green there, he's a vital piece of this offense. So now the ball up to the 43 yard line here for Faraday. And Ty Ty Milligan's gonna be brought down behind the line of scrimmage, a huge loss. Quadri Jackson bringing him down. And again, it's been a tough go for the sophomore running back as he loses four yards. Yeah, and he really wants to hit these lanes inside where the play is supposed to go and run it you know, up in, in the gap, but you can see Sopcher there, and, and then the others, once they make him bounce it out, it's just too late, you know, you, you're not gonna be able to get to that corner and make the turn. They're gonna have to figure out how to open up some lanes here. Second down and 14. They bring the blitz. Dylan's gotta run out of there, and he does. And Dylan has got the first down up to the 26 yard line. It's been a one man show offensively for the Trojans. 22 yards that time for Kobe Dillon. Well, you're right. You see 23 was supposed to be coming McKnight, but he kind of just slows up there, or loses his containment. And once Dillon breaks containment, again, showing you his ability to run the football, he's been the majority of the offense. Eight rushes for 69 yards for Dillon. Now he throws over the middle and a nice job defensively to break it up. Kyle Maxwell, but maybe too good. Could be called for interference there as he may have hit Jamie and Green before he caught it. Well, I want to see this one again and get Dylan a little late with the football, which may be why Maxwell was there a little earlier because he was clearly anticipating the slant. And Dylan doesn't have the same zip that Gilmer, so the ball gets there a little slower. But Maxwell saw this the entire way. Personal foul, face mask, number eight of the defense, uh, has the distance to the goal. The distance will result in a first down. Didn't catch the face mask. Obviously wasn't the pass interference, which I was unclear about from the beginning, but let's see if we can. It's on that backside, so it's gonna be tough to see from that angle. Clearly the ref saw it, but you can see the, the left hand towards the top of the helmet from that angle. Let's see if we can catch it from this angle. Well, you see the neck definitely snapped there, and you see the referee on the far side, so he had a good, good clear shot at it. Dylan slips, gets about three before he is brought down by Kabari Jackson, the brother of Quadri Jackson. Well, this is what this Faraday team needed. I mean, they have marched down the field, methodically gotten the run game going, haven't really been able to get Milligan going, Ty Ty, but Dylan's been doing a lot of the damage and most importantly, keeping that A-meet offense on the sideline for a little while. Tenth play of this drive for Kobe Dylan and company. There's Ty Ty Milligan and Milligan found a seam. Got very close to the first down marker. He's maybe a yard or two short with his forward progress and it's third down. Well, and that's what he's been looking for is that first little crease right off the guard there. And when he gets in there, not a big guy, but you can see he runs strong and loves to run off tackle. Faraday's had success on third down tonight. They're three for six. They got third down and two here. 12 seconds on the play clock. Dylan, why not? Breaks a tackle. Can he break another one? No, Devontae Lee brings him down very close to the first down marker. 
I don't think he got it. It might be fourth and inches. It is. It's going to be fourth down and less than a yard here for Faraday. Well, here's where you just got to bow up and you guys got to want to go get this yard. Here's it gets strung out here wide. Nice. nice tackle by Devontae Lee and Darren Branch hanging in there as well. So they bring the chains over from the far side. And that gives them a time to kind of regroup there and he'll come up with your best one yard play call here because you need to, you really need to pick this first down up and get your team on the scoreboard into the end zone. You need seven. So they stretch the sticks out. So Jeff, you know, these spread team, you got a couple inches to go. You saw a meet went under center when they need to be interesting to see if well, Dylan stays in the shotgun. Well, here's the bigger problem for Faraday. A meet's got a guy by the name of Ishmael Sopcher. So yeah. it's not that easy just to run the quarterback sneak against the number one defensive tackle in the country. No, but what you do is you identify number 91 and you run it in the opposite direction. I mean, you don't run it towards 91 if he's Lined up on the left side, run it to the right side. But don't, I would not take my chances running it against 91. Looks like they're gonna at least get a dry football out there. Well, you can see just a, a sharp by about the, maybe a little more than the length of a football is all they need. Nine carries, 70 yards for Kobe Dillon. Big yard coming up here for Faraday if they want to get back into this ball game. Need to figure out a way to get this first down. They're going to run it from the shotgun, so now you're going to need to run it six, seven yards to get a couple of inches. And here we go. Dillon He's puts it. his head down. He's got the first down. And very close to the end zone, but he stopped right at the goal line. Nicely designed play there. It was blocked very well off the left side. As Dylan goes in there, banging bodies. So inside the one yard line now here for Faraday. Well, and with this momentum that your offensive line has, you can see Dylan getting a little fired up. I'd, I'd feed him, I'd, I'd keep it going here. Run the same play. Fourth and go. Ty Ty bounces it to the outside and he's brought down a loss of three. Great defensive play again for the Warriors. Cameron Henderson, I think, came up and made the hit. Yeah, Henderson and Lee, but this is the problem. When you when you bounce it to the outside, you run the risk of losing yardage. And they were right there on the on the goal line. And as you mentioned, they went back a couple yards there. But I'd, I'd use Dylan, the bigger back here. I mean, the bigger guy. You know, Dylan probably goes close to 200 pounds, and that's a big defensive line you're running against. Ty Ty gets another chance to the outside again. And that time with a couple of blocks, he's in the end zone for the touchdown, his 29th of the season. A three-yard touchdown run, and Faraday is on the board here in Amy. Well, this time they run it over to the wide side, allow him to use his speed, and man, I was waiting for him to cut this thing up. I, I was concerned he was going to wait so long to cut it up that he may have gotten tackled before. Watch right here. Right there, I was like, cut it, cut it, and then. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to get up the field. Can't, yeah. go, can't go east west. Yeah. You're not picking up yards when you're running east to west. <laughs> All right, I think they're going to go for two, and that would be the smart thing to do to then make it at least a two possession game. Well, Faraday now. Well, let's get this two point play out of the way. It looks like Byron Milligan is lined up as the quarterback. He jumps over one tackler, but can't jump over the next one. Shamar Buckley brings him down. So, 18 point difference here between Amy and Faraday. But here's the uh, situation for the Trojans. Uh, they will get the ball to begin the second half. So, defensively, they, they can get another stand here. Heck, uh, who knows where Byron Milligan's going to kick this ball. Maybe they can recover it. 
Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. Let's look at Milligan's yeah, This time they go run. to the wide side, and right here, I just thought he got a little, a little lethargic there. <laughs> you know, get that ball into the end zone. Good block by Tevin Bird as Milligan now 10 carries, two yards, but he does get the touchdown. Damon Ye Milligan, 13 plays, 65 yards, really nice drive, and Kobe Dillon did a lot of the work and give his offensive line some credit as well to open up some holes for him. Looks like we're going to have a new kicker. Yeah, I think they're not sure where the ball's going when Milligan kicks it. Blake Tarver will tee it up here for the Trojans. Devontae Lee is not back for a meet as they have. And Tarver's kick is a line drive going to be taken by Cameron Henderson and Henderson to the 28 yard line. Good job that time on the coverage team. Let's take a look at the class 2A bracket semifinal game tonight between a meets and Faraday. This is the bottom side of the bracket. You see Faraday the number three seed. What a great ball game last week beating St. Helena Central 26 21. How about the Northeast Vikings pulling off the upset early on and they ended up getting to the second round this season. Franklin, a huge upset over Kinder in the second round. And here we are. And again, the winner of this game will take on the winner of the Iota Welsh game. Pass is a little bit too low there for Devontae Lee as Gilmore didn't give Lee much of a chance. But there's a look at Devontae Lee. This kid's work ethic is phenomenal. Great athlete and has really become a team leader for this Amy team. And it's his mindset, no matter what, to help this team win. So even though he hasn't really put up any kind of numbers in this game, he is has to be satisfied, at least at this moment, that his team is up by 18. Gilmore to throw again, and it's an interception. Threw it right to Byron Washington. And look at this, Faraday is in business. Wow, this is just what Faraday needed. And you know, the thing is, is when you have that big drive that Faraday had earlier, that a meat offense is sitting on the sideline, they're cooling off, not in rhythm. And this time, just miscommunication. Thought there was gonna be a hookup right there with Henderson, and Henderson continues down the, down the field and it just throws it right into the chest of Washington. He has no choice but to catch this football. I mean, just hits him right in the chest. And just miscommunication. But again, I tribute this to Faraday being able to take the football and put that a meat offense on the sideline, allow them to cool off a little bit. And you come back out, not in the same rhythm. And good job by the Faraday defense. Stanley Smith now needs his offense to take advantage of this. This is the second drive they've started in a meat territory. Last time it was at the 12 and they didn't score any points. Late at the half here, they need to figure out a way to punch this thing in. From the 32 yard line. All kinds of pressure on Dillon, and Dillon will go down, loss of a yard or so. And Corey McKnight coming around that edge. Well, they need to be a little mindful of the clock here, too, because you can see it ticking down to two minutes. And they normally run their offense fairly methodical. It's not a, a, a hurry up tempo, so you got to be a little mindful here. Two timeouts for the Trojans. Tie time right next to Kobe Dillon. Dillon to throw. They set up the screen ball, batted in the air, and almost intercepted by Woolridge. As you look at Sopcher, got his hands on that, I believe. That's just a big stud right there, man. <laughs> he looks like a big defensive player. Plays there, but, but trying to set up for the screen, and that's what you teach him to do. When you realize it's a screen, and kind of released you. You got to get those hands up in the air and try to knock the ball down and it's textbook there. Dylan hasn't had much success throwing the ball tonight. Two of six for 13 yards. Third down and 12. Let's see if he tries to pick up the first down here with his legs. Amy might be bringing some pressure. They got a lot of guys up at the line of scrimmage. And Dylan is flushed out and down he goes. Quadri Jackson with the sack. 
Over 120 tackles this season. He'll probably be a safety at the next level on his size, but he's a linebacker for this Warriors team, and he's been making plays all night tonight. Yeah, they just, I mean, you can see Sopcher over there. Just too much to handle. They got two offensive linemen on him, and he just, he wreaks so much havoc that it allows his teammates, his colleagues, to be able to get through there and apply pressure. Well, that was one of the things that Zephaniah Powell was talking with us about Sopcher that, he might have some games where he's not putting up huge stats, but all his teammates are because they're all worried about Sopcher. On fourth down and going down is Dylan as he is sacked. Combo right. sack that time for the Warriors. Hezekiah Neeson was one of them, a loss of three. And for the second time tonight, Faraday starts to drive in Amy's territory, but does absolutely nothing with it. Well, it's, and you, you have Sopcher causing all kind of havoc on the line, but then you're bringing defensive backs down and blitzing and adding even more pressure. But I tell you what, Dylan has not had any time really to operate back there in the pocket. And we mentioned that he hasn't been able to really complete a bunch of passes. Well, he hadn't had time to throw the football. Ball at the 39-yard line. Warriors with one timeout and one minute to go before halftime. Gilmore throws and a bad pass there. He just didn't know what he wanted to do with it. First thought about going to the flat, but Kyle Maxwell all of a sudden was open and then he ended up throwing the ball at his feet. Yeah, a little indecisive, but that's one where you just slow down and just get the ball out there to... That would have been to Milligan, and I mean, he had him wide open up the sideline. Just complete the pass, just float it out there. Let Milligan catch it right there, and he's probably taking that into the end zone. Second down. Gilmore, 5 of 11 for 100 yards and a couple of touchdowns, and I think the Warriors might use one of their timeouts here. So Amy will sit here and talk about it. Game time on your view, Louisiana. Thanks, Louisiana Lift, for their support of this telecast, specializing in customer service on equipment, rentals, parts, and training. Louisiana Lift has been serving its customers since 1980. You can check them out online at lalift.com or call their Baton Rouge office at 753-5700. Or contact the New Orleans area office, 504-463-3400. Louisiana Lift, they're always on call. What a barn burner yeah, down in Destrehan. Heating up down there in the River Parish. 33-30. Zachary leading the Wildcats in the second half. Was that the score, 33-30? 33-30, yeah. Oh, second quarter, second quarter. West Monroe blanking John Errett 14 to nothing. Edna Carr over Neville 13-7. And Warren Easton leading Leesville 26-7. Gilmore will run it, and he's got a lot of brown grass in front of him as he goes down at the 48-yard line. Now he's got to get his team to the line of scrimmage here and either get a playoff or spike it. 13-yard run for the senior QB. Yeah, see, losing a lot of time here. Clock has started. Gilmore. Winds up, goes deep, and it is, what a grab! Wow. Nicely done by Kyle Maxwell as he hangs on to it at the 10 yard line. Wow, and I, did, I think he, obviously he called a catch, but what an incredible job by Maxwell of holding on to this football. I mean, this took every bit of concentration because he was getting hit as he was coming down. Second great catch by Maxwell, the Louisiana Tech commitment. Now from the 11, a flag flies where they set. Let's see here, him pull this down. Let's see if he maintains control of this all the way through it. Heck yeah, he does. Boy, that is an impressive catch right there. Byron Milligan. Defense, five yard penalty, it remains first down. So the five yard penalty. And we're at the six yard line now. Three penalties on Faraday, four on a meet. First and goal. 
Time to throw here for Gilmore. Now he's being chased back to the back of the end wow. zone. Touchdown, again. Maxwell again. Uh, he's got just glue in those gloves. I mean, anything you throw at him, it just sticks. We've seen him make a, an earlier touchdown catch on a good adjustment from the slot. And this time, Gilmore scrambling around, just throws it to the back of the end zone, but Maxwell just plucks it out the air cleanly. Well, Zephaniah Powell told us Kyle Maxwell's stock is rising. Well, it's going to rise even more. <laughs> I mean, watch him just go up and pluck that. I mean, hey, that's my ball. That is my ball. He just threw a jump ball, essentially, but went up and got it. Extra point try coming up here from Liam Adamson. Four catches, 63 yards for Maxwell. So Maxwell, his second touchdown catch of the night. And it's now 31 to six. Well, good job by Gilborg, scrambling, keeping the play alive. And, and he does the right thing. This is what quarterbacks are taught to do is throw it high into the back of the end zone to where only your guy can make wow. the play. And oh, when you got a guy who can go up and get it like that, I, I guarantee you he's dunking the basketball all kind of different ways. Man, we, you hear so much about Devontae Lee and his prospects at the next level, but if Skip Holtz is able to keep this commitment, look out. There's a... Yeah, he, he's, he's had a heck of a first half. Six foot three, 180 pounds. He's been the... He's been the real star in the receiving core, but you know, like Sobshire on defense, a lot of people key in on Lee and that gives other receivers opportunities. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you, man. Soft hands, good routes, Coach Powell tells us. Over 600 yards receiving, tech touchdowns. Arkansas, Kansas, and Tulane are a couple of the other schools who have offered Maxwell. Nice job on the kickoff coverage unit there for the Warriors. Detravion Sopcher makes the tackle. He's a little bit smaller than Ishmael Sopcher. Four plays, 61 yards, 42 seconds off the clock. Great drive there for Aim Eats to go up by 25 before halftime. And it's gonna be an uphill climb here for Stanley Smith and the Trojans. Looks like they're gonna take a knee and then head into the locker room, try to regroup. They will get the ball to begin the second half, but Amy has shown why they are one of the top teams in 2A. They're not just a top team in 2A. They're one of the top teams in the state of Louisiana. That's right. yep. And they are showing that here tonight. Very impressive first half as Gilmore throws three touchdown passes. Two of them going there to that young man, Kyle Maxwell. A tough one for Stanley Smith. Faraday came out with a lot of emotion, did a lot of things well early on in the football game, but really there was a, a six minute, 30 second period that occurred where this thing just got out of control for Faraday. Yeah, but they had an opportunity on that last turnover and they needed to put points on the board. You know, they intercepted deep in Amy's own territory and just didn't convert. Down on the field and Smacker Miles. Coach, your offense got better and better as the game went. They really ended up looking like pros that last drive. How did they get it going? Um, just, just momentum. Uh, but I give credit to our defense, though. We put our defense right there in a bad situation right before half. But, you know, credit our kids on defense for playing. And then once our kids on offense saw it, you know, our energy level picked up. Quarterback made some good throws. Uh, receivers made some good catches. But it started up front with our offensive line and protection. Defensively, you knew you, knew you needed to keep pressure on that Faraday quarterback. How would you guys do so well on that? He's special. I mean, you we, we can only hope to contain him. You know, it's, it's still a young game. You know, he, he's made some plays, but you know, we, got, we got to go in half and kind of do some adjustments because we know second half they're going to put the ball more in his hands. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Jeff? All right, thanks, Smacker. Very impressive first half is Kyle Maxwell. An acrobatic catch there. One of the big highlights in that first half for the Warriors. Faraday's got a big climb the hill, or Bill Hill climb to, you know what I mean. We'll be back after this. Game Time Halftime is brought to you by 
Podna's Barbecue. Slow cooked, fall off the bone perfection, and the best baked beans in America. Gary Lewis Property. From apartments, condominiums, and townhomes, Gary Lewis Properties is a top provider in Baton Rouge of residential and commercial property for rent. Monogram Express. We make ordinary gifts extraordinary. And by Louisiana Lift. And Louisiana Lift, we're always on call. Check out yourview.com for in depth high school football coverage. When I tore my ACL, I didn't think I'd ever be able to play soccer again. My doctor told me how important physical therapy would be, so I chose Peak. I'm glad I did. Now I'm stronger, faster, better than ever. Choose Peak. Choose Peak Performance Physical Therapy. When I get back to Baton Rouge, I get in my blues mobile and I drive right on down to Partners Barbecue. And you know what I do? I get me some ribs, all oh, ten to two. Some baked beans, some potato salad, some smoked sausage. <laughs> you got to come on down to Partners Barbecue, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, Joe Martin here. You've seen our commercials over the years, and you may be wondering, what's in it for me? Well, ITI Technical College has been selected by Forbes magazine as a top 32-year college. But even more than that, the reason we do this is you. Our tagline is for a better life, and we mean that for you to be able to have the life you've always dreamed about, to do the things for your family you've always dreamed about. And it can begin here where we are dedicated to your success, because here at ITI, the reason we do it is you. Exercising is my life, so when I had to stop because of my foot and ankle pain, I was absolutely devastated. I chose Peak and they taught me how to relieve the pain. They really do bring out the athlete in everyone. Choose Peak. Choose Peak Performance Physical Therapy. Tonight's Game Time League standings are brought to you by Crown Trophy. Check out the stories behind the games. Visit yourview.com slash Louisiana. I'm Evan Raymond with Louisiana Farm Bureau. I'm an agent in East Baton Rouge Parish, and we're out here today at Luckett Farms for the corn maze and pumpkin patch. So, you know, it's that time of year. It's fall season. Uh, football's in full swing now, and uh, just like we love to get out and, and go to our local high school games, uh, this is another great example of just spending time out in the community uh, with our families and friends. And, uh, you know, we got the, the holiday season coming up with Halloween and Thanksgiving, and so, uh, you know, it's that time of year for pumpkin patches and fall weather, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, get out here with the family and supporting our, our local farmers, our local community, our local events and uh, that's what Farm Bureau Insurance is all about. We're about real service, real people. Uh, you know, we do everything in this, in this area and uh, we want to give back to the community, so uh, sponsor, sponsoring events like this is a great way to do it and uh, this is what Farm Bureau is all about. We're at Peak Performance Physical Therapy. I'm joined by Patrick Cook. They see these high school players as soon as they get injured. So tell me about that process from when the guy gets hurt until they get back on the field. Well, in the case of football, you know, somebody gets hurt, they're laying down, we'll run out onto the field to, to assess them. Uh, usually us, an athletic trainer and a medical doctor, hopefully if we have the right team set forth on the sidelines, we'll all go out there and, and look at the athlete. And then, um, you know, depending on what's going on, if it's something minor, we'll work with them on the sideline, trying to get them back to what they want to do. If it's more intense, then they may need to get in to see the physician on Monday morning, and they may end up in our clinic on Monday afternoon. So they may come to Mid-City to see me, may go to one of our other seven locations across Baton Rouge, and we're going to work with that athlete a couple days a week to try to get them back as soon as we can. First, we got to get their pain better. We got to get their motion restored. We got to get them stronger. Once they're in that position, then it's a return to play program. That's where we are working with the trainers and the strength coaches at the schools to try to get them back to that high level of performance that athletes need to be at so they can get back and not re-injure themselves on the field. How important is for these guys to get immediate medical attention, whether it's minor or major? Well, it's important to have the proper team in place on the sidelines. If there's a cardiac event or a, a, a cervical spinal cord injury, you need to have medical attention immediately on the field, and that can be the, the difference between life and death. And a lot of these other cases, you know, a lot of times, thankfully, they're just minor injuries, but it's important to have them taken care of as, as efficiently as possible. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Well, I've had back pain now and then, but it got so bad I couldn't even bend over. 
I didn't want to resort to pain pills, so I chose Peak, hoping they could relieve the pain. They got me active again. I even lost weight. I believe in better. I chose Peak. Choose Peak Performance Physical Therapy. I'm Brett Favre. As a quarterback in the NFL, if I didn't stay focused, I ended up on my back or worse. Even the smallest distraction could make a good play or offensive drive come to an end. When you're in a car, the smallest distraction could end much more than a drive. It could end someone's life. Just like I refuse to lose on the field, I refuse to lose someone I love to distract the driver. And you should too. Focus on the road. Don't drive distracted. A message from Farm Bureau Insurance. Come enjoy a great location just minutes away from the hustle and bustle of the city at Suma Lake Apartments. Experience luxurious living with all appliances included, granite countertops, and walk-in closets. Relax in a peaceful environment by the pool or enjoy fishing in a nine acre lake. Kids are sure to enjoy the playground and basketball court. Located in Livingston Parish in a great school district. Call today, 225-686-1111. I think that people want to be in West Feliciana because it's truly one of the unique parts of Louisiana. That if you live in West Feliciana, you can have it all. You can have a great lifestyle, a government that works for you and is open and transparent. You can have wonderful neighbors. You can have a great school. You can live in an environment that's free of fear from crime. We're less than 20 minutes from the Baton Rouge Airport, 30 minutes from the state capitol. What we have in West Feliciana is a place where you really can have it all. I spent years suffering from knee pain, so I decided to have replacement surgery. My doctor did a great job, and he allowed me to choose Peak for my PT. I should have done this a long time ago. I'm so glad I chose Peak. Choose Peak Performance Physical Therapy. Tonight's Game Time Player of the Game is brought to you by ITI Technical College, your key to a better life. Check out the stories behind the games. Visit yourview.com slash Louisiana. 31 to 6 is our score at halftime as the A Meet Warriors. 24 minutes away from another trip to the Mercedes Benz Superdome to play for another state title. They were there in 2016, lost to Lutcher in the Class 3A state championship game. Obviously, some terrific stuff on the field for A Meet. For more about what's happening in the classroom, let's go down to Smacker Miles. I have Mr. McCurley. He's the principal at A Meet. They have a lot of exciting stuff going at school, but we can't, we have to get to this game. Sure. Up at halftime with the possibility of heading to the state finals. How excited are you? Oh, very excited. You know, our team has worked very hard all year long. Uh, our players, our coaches, everybody associated with the team, the band, the cheerleaders, dance team, they really put in a lot of hard work, and it's great to see their hard work paying off at this time of the year. Amy has some unique programs that help set these kids up for success after high school. Tell us about those programs. Yeah, we, we offer a lot of things, not just your traditional high school diploma. Our kids can also take uh, courses in CNA, welding, automotive. Uh, we also have a broadcasting studio here on campus where they can learn the ins and outs of broadcasting. It gives the kids uh, a lot of opportunities to experience a lot of different uh, technical areas. That's awesome. Thank you, Mr. McCurley. Mr. McCurley. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Jeff? Yeah, good stuff. And once again, thanks to Amy and Faraday for allowing us to bring this game to you tonight. We'll have more of the West Feliciana Parish Halftime Show when we come back. Hey, Joe Martin here. You've seen our commercials over the years and you may be wondering, what's in it for me? Well, ITI Technical College has been selected by Forbes Magazine as a top 32 year college. But even more than that, the reason we do this is you. Our tagline is for a better life. And we mean that for you to be able to have the life you've always dreamed about, to do the things for your family you've always dreamed about. And it can begin here where we are dedicated to your success because here at ITI, the reason we do it is you. When I get back to Baton Rouge, I get in my blues mobile and I drive right on down to Partners Barbecue. And you know what I do? I get me some ribs, all oh, ten to two. Some baked beans, some potato salad, some smoked sausage. <laughs> you got to come on down to Partners Barbecue, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Come enjoy a great location just minutes away from the hustle and bustle of the city at Suma Lake Apartments. Experience luxurious living with all appliances included, granite countertops, and walk-in closets. 
Relax in a peaceful environment by the pool or enjoy fishing in a nine acre lake. The kids are sure to enjoy the playground and basketball court. Located in Livingston Parish in a great school district. Call today, 225-686-1111. I'm Brett Favre. As a quarterback in the NFL, if I didn't stay focused, I ended up on my back or worse. Even the smallest distraction could make a good play or offensive drive come to an end. When you're in a car, the smallest distraction could end much more than a drive. It could end someone's life. Just like I refuse to lose on the field, I refuse to lose someone I love to distract and drive. And you should too. Focus on the road. Don't drive distracted. A message from Farm Bureau Insurance. Back at halftime as the fans here waiting for the second half to begin. Faraday High School in the semifinals for a second consecutive year. More on what they're doing inside the classroom. We go back down to the field and smack her miles. This is Mr. Collins from Faraday. They have a lot of exciting things going on academically. Tell us about that improvement. Okay, what happened uh, back in, the, it's an exciting time to be a member of the Faraday High School. Uh, back in 2016, 2017, our school performance score grew 15 points. That's one of the highest uh, in the state of Louisiana. And that propelled us to a C school. But that's not all because in 2017, 2018, our, our school performance score went from a C to a B. So we are now officially officially a B school in the state of Louisiana. And it's a very exciting time. 20% uh, of our seniors, they are enrolled in some kind of post-secondary education class, whether it's a uh, preparatory clip, whether it's AP class or dual enrollment. But the, all this is getting the to prepare for the uh, post-education and also uh, we, we, and now we also we're conjunction with Louisiana Central Louisiana uh, Technical School and we have an exciting program that's going to kick off this spring which we're going to have our students some of our male students to prepare themselves for a oil drilling that's exciting because we do have the oil drilling uh, company about five miles from Ferris so we're excited about that that's going to kick off this spring thank you Mr. Collins thank you Jeff? Sounds like some great things happening at Faraday and also at Amede as well as the Warriors up big over Faraday at halftime. As this game, uh, both defenses were settled in early on and then Amede went on an explosion there where they scored, I think, 24 points or something like that in a six-minute period and Faraday hasn't been able to catch up since then. Well, Gilmore for Amede became electric all of a sudden yeah. at the quarterback position and he just started taking the game in his own hands. He was finding running lanes as well as he hit that that big slant pattern that it, that they were able to take to the house and for Faraday they just haven't been able to get the run game going yeah, and right. they are not giving Dylan time to operate in the pocket they're going to have to clean that up at the half let's take a look at our first half highlights from this one as this is a bullet of a pass thrown by Amani Gilmore and then it's a touchdown the other way for Dorian Baptiste one of three touchdown passes for Gilmore. That was for 72 yards. And then on a botched extra point try, how about that? A great two-point conversion as Jamey Gilmore catches it. And then a bad snap there. That made it tense. And I think Gilmore scoring on the quarterback sneak was 17 to nothing. Another bad snap results in a turnover. Recovered there by Elijah, or excuse me, Marlon Ard. How about that touchdown grab from Maxwell? Finally getting on the board, Faraday. Ty Ty Milligan gets into the end zone. Been a rough first half for him. And then an interception here. Looked like maybe Faraday could get something going there. Byron Washington on the interception. And then more Gilmore to Kyle Maxwell, who goes up and gets it. Second touchdown catch of the night for Kyle Maxwell. And there's a look at the numbers for the two teams. And you see the total yards for Amy. They are dominating right there, 219 to 56. Yeah, and, and almost all the rushing yards by both teams are about from the quarterback position. And those passing yards, as you mentioned, those were Maxwell making some huge catches for this Amy team and propelling them into the end zone a couple times. 11 plays for Faraday have gone for negative yards. They got to clean that up if they want to get back in this football game. 31 6, Amy leading Faraday. Second half kickoff coming back when we come back here. This is game time on your view.
This throbbing neck pain was so bad it moved to my shoulders and was causing severe headaches. Then a friend suggested I choose Peak. Two weeks later, the pain was completely gone. So glad I chose Peak. Choose Peak Performance Physical Therapy. Hey, Joe Martin here. You've seen our commercials over the years and you may be wondering, what's in it for me? Well, ITI Technical College has been selected by Forbes Magazine as a top 32 year college. But even more than that, the reason we do this is you. Our tagline is for a better life. And we mean that for you to be able to have the life you've always dreamed about, to do the things for your family you've always dreamed about. And it can begin here where we are dedicated to your success because here at ITI, the reason we do it is you. I think that people want to be in West Feliciana because it's truly one of the unique parts of Louisiana. That if you live in West Feliciana, you can have it all. You can have a great lifestyle, a government that works for you and is open and transparent. You can have wonderful neighbors, you can have a great school, you can live in an environment that's free of fear from crime. We're less than 20 minutes from the Baton Rouge Airport, 30 minutes from the state capitol. What we have in West Feliciana is a place where you really can have it all. Do you need to say great job, congratulations, or way to go? Crown Trophy on Sherwood Forest Boulevard in Baton Rouge has the trophy, plaque, acrylic, or crystal award you're looking for. Whether it's for your team, business, or church, come to Crown Trophy. We guarantee the highest level of customer service, and there's no charge for rush orders or trophy engraving. We're nationally known and locally owned. Visit us online to view our catalog at www.crowntrophy.com. My shoulder pain got so bad I couldn't lift anything overhead. So I chose Peak Performance and I can't believe how much better I am now. Peak really does get you back into the game of life. Choose Peak. Choose Peak Performance Physical Therapy. Tonight's Game Time Play of the Game is brought to you by Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Ready to serve you with auto insurance, homeowners insurance, life insurance, and more. Real service, real people. This is our final broadcast of the year. Let's look back at some of the great plays from a, an exciting 2018 season on your view. That's not the, uh...
Been a great season here on your view. I hope you've had a chance to watch a lot of our games this season. Sad that it's coming to an end with uh, this uh, 24 minutes of football left here as the Amy Warriors will be teeing it up and kicking it back off to Faraday. Ladarius Armin has it teed up. Well, we'll see what Faraday can do if they got enough firepower to get back into this football game. Byron Milligan, one of the men re ready to return this one, but this time it is Ty Ty Milligan straight ahead to the 33 yard line. Let's go down to Smacker Miles who had a chance to talk with Faraday's head coach, Stanley Smith. Coach Smith seemed pretty upset, but just disappointed more than loudly angry. He said that the team just has to stop beating themselves. And on top of that, they need to execute much better. He really emphasized the execution on this second half. He wants to see them play their best half of football and finish the year strong no matter what. Jeff? Thanks, Smacker. We'll see if they'll be able to do that against this very talented Amy Warriors team. Yeah, and also let's see if he's able to make some adjustments with his offensive line and maybe getting the ball out a little bit quicker. Low snap. That's not how you want to start the second half as Dylan has to just fall on it. As they've had some issues tonight with the snap and shotgun formation as Dylan loses a few yards. Dylan really the only offense for Faraday in that first half. 13 carries for 66 yards through for 13 yards. And Ty Ty Milligan, their 50, 1,500 yard rusher. As there's movement on the line, I think Amy jumped off sides. But Damon Ye Milligan, 10 carries, two yards. Number 90 defense, five yard penalty. They remain second down. Penalty called against Amy. That's five penalties on the Warriors for 33 yards. The umbrella's back out as the rain looks like it's coming back down. So now it's second down and nine. Tarver in motion. Some misdirection and a little razzle dazzle here trying to open something up for Green and he gets level. Coming up and drilling him is Quadri Jackson. Well, I, I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to loosen up and make this defensive front a little bit more honest and obviously Amy bringing the blitz, but they ran the reverse in such a tight space that it never really <laughs> had an opportunity to fool the defense. The ball was right back in the space that it had left in, in the blink of an eye. And so uh, it just wasn't, wasn't much there to that design. Loss of five, third down and 13 already here for Faraday on the first drive of the second half, and they'll just run it straight ahead. And Milligan spins away and stays on his feet, his best run of the night, and that's a first down for the Trojans. How about that? Well, and that's where he likes to get going, is right through, as I was mentioned, right off guard or right off tackle. He loves those creases in the middle. He runs with good vision and a lot of power, again, for not a very big guy, breaking arm tackles and spinning. And that's where he does his damage. That's a big first down pickup. 18 yard run, they give it back to him. And that time he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Quadri Jackson has been in the backfield all night long, and makes another tackle behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of about two yards that time for Ty Ty Milligan. Well, again, just not going to beat him laterally to the sideline. They are. Once they make him bounce it out, the chances of that play having success is minimal. Second down and 12 as Kobe Dillon takes a look at the defense. They go back to Ty Ty and Ty Ty is going down. Just no blocking at all. And then he gets thrown down a little bit. Hezekiah Neeson, one of the defenders there. Sopcher was there too. It's third and long again for Faraday. That's James McGowan who runs very well, over 80 tackles on the season. Well, the guy you're gonna be looking for is number 12 here, Green. That's normally the receiver that he likes to go to and he's in these types of situations. Third down and 13. And there he is right there in your screen. Faraday four of nine on third downs on this opening drive. 
They run the screen. Doesn't look like it's going to happen unless he gets some missed tackles and a nice run after the catch. That was nicely done by Justin Burns, and that might be enough for a first down. 11 yards. He's a yard shy of the first down, but obviously down by 25, you're going to go for it. What a play by Burns. I didn't think this play had a chance, I as you see the immediate defenders all around him, but able to get into the open field and almost pick up the first down, but you can see there about a yard sharp. He thought he got the first down. Fourth <laughs> yeah. down and one. Faraday's one for three on fourth downs. Quarterback keep. And look out. Sopcher just drilled the guy that on the jet sweep and then it ended up knocking down Kobe Dillon as Ishmael Sopcher introduces himself to the Faraday backfield. Wow. Unbelievable. Watch this hit. Oh, oh man. God. Well, Elijah White, he's a sophomore. He'll feel that one for the next two years well, before he graduates. Not only that, he's going to be like, I don't want to be the fake guy anymore. <laughs> I mean, he took all that abuse and didn't even have the football. And that's that's legal. I mean, because Shopshire doesn't know who has the football. What's amazing, that contact just knocked down Kobe Dillon. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it was so, it, there was such an impact in the backfield there. Dylan lost his feet or lost his footing on this wet turf. Amy back out offensively is Cameron Henderson into Faraday territory to the 36 yard line, 17 yards as Amani Gilmore had a great first half, 142 yards passing, three touchdowns, had the interception. He also ran the ball for 65 yards and a touchdown. Oh, I'm still trying to get over that hit. I mean, he, <laughs> he blew the whole thing up. Wow, reminds me of that play from Clowney when you know. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Keeping it is Gilmore. Gilmore takes a big hit, but falls forward for another yard. Gets about four or five there. Monty Gilmore over 600 yards rushing. Let's take oh, a look at show it. this again. I mean, he just blows the whole play. Oh, God. Boy, that's vicious. I mean, this whole crowd. The entire meat stands were on their feet. You talk about lighting a fire under your team. Sometimes it's just your plate. Second out and five. I'd like to meet the scout team offensive lineman for a meet that's had to block that guy all year. I'm just glad I'm not one of them. <laughs> uh, that guy deserves some sort of a medal. Yeah. <laughs> More than just a participation trophy. Third down and five is Faraday wanting to try to get something going here defensively. <laughs> and, you, and you know Elijah White wanted to get up and say, man, I don't even have the football. <laughs> Why are you so mad at me? <laughs> Third and six. Gilmore, he'll run for the first down. All the way up to the 20-yard line as Sapcher. Cooling off on the sidelines, an 11-yard oh, run by Gilmore. Well, they call him the humble beast, the number one defensive tackle in the country, soft-spoken kid. You don't need to speak loud when you no. do that, man. Oh, let, let your action speak for you. Tell you what, he's going to be a heck of a player. Next level. Will it be LSU or Alabama? You'll have to wait until National Signing Day in February. Devontae Lee, the other big time prospect who hasn't had many opportunities here tonight, trying to run it as he was lined up as the Wildcat quarterback. Again, just another special player. I mean, this a neat team has D1 prospects all over it. You don't normally see that many D1 prospects on a team at this classification outside of like Uha. You have a town here of just over 4,000 residents and you got two of the top high school seniors in the country right here. And then if you add Trey Palmer from nearby Kentwood, that's three yep. of the top 10 players in the state. Kentwood made the trip up to Haynesville tonight. 
Trey Palmer not playing. He's uh, out for the year. Third down and nine here. Amy up by 25 as Gilmore going to the end zone again. Jump ball, Devontae Lee, touchdown Warriors. If you want to know why so many Division I Power 5 schools are wanting Devontae Lee, just watch this play here. You can see the Amit fans, they loving it. They are loving it. This whole town is going to be rocking. And it's just an unbelievable. I mean, Smith came. All you can do is just shake your head at this catch. I mean, he just throws it over the corner. Watch the adjustment Man. behind. I mean, you, you you can't even really teach that stuff. I mean, it's almost like you, you just got to be a superb athlete to be able to make that kind of adjustment and catch. The extra point is good. And the Amy Warriors are rolling again. They lost their first game of the season to Metairie Park Country Day. Since then, they have been unstoppable. Amani Gilmore to Devontae Lee. Amy heading back to the Dome. Hey, Joe Martin here. You've seen our commercials over the years, and you may be wondering, what's in it for me? Well, ITI Technical College has been selected by Forbes Magazine as a top 32-year college. But even more than that, the reason we do this is you. Our tagline is for a better life, and we mean that for you to be able to have the life you've always dreamed about, to do the things for your family you've always dreamed about. And it can begin here where we are dedicated to your success, because here at ITI, the reason we do it is you. I'm Brett Favre. As a quarterback in the NFL, if I didn't stay focused, I ended up on my back or worse. Even the smallest distraction could make a good play or offensive drive come to an end. When you're in a car, the smallest distraction could end much more than a drive. It could end someone's life. Just like I refuse to lose on the field, I refuse to lose someone I love to distract and drive them. And you should too. Focus on the road. Don't drive distracted. A message from Farm Bureau Insurance. Well, the two superstar players have made their presence known here in this third quarter. The big hit by Sopcher that ended the Faraday drive. And then Devontae Lee with the touchdown catch, number 14 for him. Had 30 catches during the regular season. Big time play there. You got LSU, Texas, Ohio State. And just like Sopcher, he will make his announcement as far as where he'll be playing college football on National Signing Day in February. So you're going to be, especially once we get to January, on the return here, and Milligan, Byron Milligan to the 24, as he's wrapped up and thrown down to the ground. But uh, when we get to the second half of January and leading up to February, you're going to be hearing a lot about Sapcher and Devontae Lee. And you got a lot of other underrated players. After watching this A-Me team for the first time this season, you heard about them, but they've got some really good players on this, on this team outside of the two superstars. Lee, 20-yard touchdown catch on the uh, scoring drive. Seven plays, 53 yards, brought to you by ITI Technical College. So Faraday, on their last drive, they had five plays that went for negative yards during a seven-play drive. And that's been a, a big issue for them here tonight. Their only saving grace is that they've been pretty good on third down tonight. Good tackle down low by A meets James McGowan. Four for ten on third downs tonight for Faraday, and they've converted a couple of third and longs. Well, and this comes down to Faraday just could not handle the pressure. Uh, and one, the defensive line, it's just with Sopcher leading, it's just too good up front. But, you know, Amit hadn't even played with a safety tonight. I mean, they've got 10 people in the box. And another, guess who talk, made another <laughs> tackle behind the line of scrimmage? That's Quadre Jackson. Yeah, I mean, when you got defensive backs living in the backfield, that just lets you know. I mean, they're bringing, uh-oh, and you don't want to see that. Got upended. Yeah, this was a big hit here on Ty Ty Milligan. Just went low on him and flipped him there. Oh, you hope that's not. Ah, ah. Boy, boy, oh boy. And he's walking that off the field. Because yeah. he landed ugly on his head, neck here. Yeah, that's good. That's a good sign there. He's got the helmet off. Been a 
and experience tonight for Milligan, who's had a lot of success tonight or this season, over 1,500 yards rushing, but really only one good run tonight of about 12 yards. Other than that, he's been stopped at the line of scrimmage or lost a couple of yards, and they'll just make sure he's okay over there on the sidelines, and if he doesn't have to go back out there, with his team down by 32, no reason to send him back out there. And you can see at all levels of football now, any time, you know, something happens around the head or neck area, there's so many cautionary steps that you have to take, and rightfully so, they should. Third down and 14. Dylan will zip one over, and it is caught. Nope, he said he was out of bounds. Jamie and Green could not keep a foot in bounds as they continue to look at Ty Ty Milligan. Yeah, see working. Just just trying to make sure that there's absolutely no signs of concussion type symptoms or anything. You see, he looks like he's may have some type of headache or something there. Neck strain or something. That yeah. was a rough fall. But they're cleaning it up in all sports. I don't know if you know my, my ten year old plays competitive soccer and they don't even let him head the ball at that age, Jeff. I mean, because they just don't. I mean, it's not taking chances with these young athletes anymore. Timeout going to be called here by Faraday with 344 left to go. Been a good season for Faraday, even though it doesn't look like it's going to continue in a trip to the Dome. Second straight year they lost in the semifinals. Last year they lost to St. Helena by six. That was their first trip to the semifinals since 1995. In 2016 they lost to Madison Prep, who ended up going to the 2A state championship game. But they won four state championships from 1953 to 56. That's that's pretty good. And he didn't have five classes and four divisions no. back in those days. <laughs> and their last appearance in a state title game, 1984, is uh, Milligan looks like he's heading yeah. to the locker room. They're going to evaluate him. But very impressed talking with uh, Stanley Smith, the head coach for Faraday, the kid that played, I call him a kid, but uh, a guy who played college football for the Raging Cajuns and a Faraday product. Had a great senior season at Faraday where he was named the Concordia Parish Player of the Year. Seven sacks, nine forced fumbles. So Faraday's in good hands and they're going to be bringing back their quarterback. They're going to be bringing back Ty Ty Milligan. And the putter drops the snap. Oh, it was man. right there. And it's going to be a meets football at the 10 yard line is special teams, especially on punts has been a mess tonight for Faraday. Well, when it rains, it pours and literally out here tonight because uh, it has just been, it's been bad play after bad play. And actually that was just a good snap. Milligan just doesn't concentrate on the football. And he was looking up. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta watch it in. It's the simple things. Lost 10 on that play and Warriors offense about ready to take the field again. See, uh, Sopcher is, uh, is out there offensively. Yeah, I mean, if you're Faraday, you're like, hey, what the heck? <laughs> this is unfair now. Yeah, where, where is he going to line up? Wherever he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's lined up as a tight end. Yeah. I have a feeling they're going to be throwing the ball to number 91. Oh, my him. goodness. Look at him. He's taking on two he, defenders. He, he knocked two guys out there. Oh, my goodness, man. Faraday's <laughs> got to be thinking, hey, it's been a tough night. Now you bring your are we still tight playing? end left tackle. Are we still playing 2A <laughs> football here? Watch number 91 oh fire God. off the ball oh, here. Jeez. <laughs> That's unfair, man. <laughs> On the run here is Devontae Lee, and he is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Still a lot of Devontae Lee dragging a defender there for a few feet, a few yards. Blake Tarver had a yeah. hold on to his leg. This is what you call the jumbo package when you bring your big guy in like that. You know, LSU used to do that. Uh, and uh, I guess that was under Les Miles. He would bring in um, uh, Spears a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, then Nick Saban. Also, Saban was the one yeah, who started Saban. that. Yeah. Third and goal. Check with me to the sidelines. Late third quarter here. Amy started to separate themselves from Faraday in the second quarter. Haven't looked back. Gilmore somehow got away from it. Fires one for a touchdown. Great job.
job by Gilmore. Touchdown catch for James McGowan. Six yard TD catch. There is a flag though, so hold on. And this the offense, five yard penalty, replay third down. So he'll take the touchdown off the board. Another 40 plus performance for Amy's offense tonight. They have scored 40 or more in all but three games. It's a nice job by Gilmore. And then McGowan sitting there in the end zone saying, throw it to me. And there's guys all wide open all over the place. Ball marked just outside the 10 yard line at the 11. Another flag flies. Ball start, number 63, offense. Five yard penalty, it remains third down. That's seven penalties now for the Warriors as Dakota Cox was the guilty person. They are inside the Gary Lewis properties red zone. Gilmore to the corner of the end zone. Too far, though. We've seen Kyle Maxwell make some great catches, but that one was a little bit out of his reach. <laughs> For Maxwell, <laughs> he couldn't climb that ladder. <laughs> so it's fourth and goal. I tell you what, he meets not letting off the gas. And I mean, they can't kick it from here, and so uh, I'm, I'm sure they'll probably try to fire another one. No, more. they're going to kick a field goal. Are they, got, they? Really? That's it. They, they did run. Yeah. Liam and Adamson is out there, and yeah. if there's a time to try it. That's it. I like the move. You may need him in the dome. You won't be kicking off brown grass, but <laughs> if he can do it here, this is a 34, 33 yard field goal try. Oh, Does he got the distance? A little right. And he missed it wide right. So Faraday, but I mean, uh, it was a good try there. He's only a freshman, so well, you that's, know, that's pretty good. And now you know his range. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, that's you can see, hey, when we were about 30 yards, we, we may be good. <laughs> coach tell him, look, you got to kick the ball. Look, yeah. Boy, I try, coach. I mean, hey. Yeah, you got to love high school kicking, coach. Just kick it through the uprights, man. It's, it's not that easy. <laughs> Just put your head down and kick it. <laughs> not that easy. All right, Kobe Dillon. They don't have uh, Ty Ty Milligan oh. anymore. Dillon got hit as he threw, and it almost intercepted by Devontae Lee. Ball hit the ground before he got his hands on it. Yeah, I didn't see the late pressure again. Just no time for Dillon in the in the backfield, and you're probably wondering, well, why is it Faraday trying to push the ball down the field more? Well, here's what happens when they do. Watch him come from the blind side here and just get his hands in there enough to deflect that ball and fortunate that was an interception. Corey McKnight looked like he got his hand and hit Dillon's just as he threw it. Byron Milligan in the backfield with Dillon. Dillon's going to be in some trouble here as nobody was open downfield and then look out. Hang on. Well, I thought they were going to ring him up there. That would be a, a penalty in the NFL. Larry Woolridge with the sack. So third down and 15. Well, got a couple scores for you. I was a little delay in the action. Zachary's opened it up a little bit on Destraham, 54 36. Let's see if we catch this face mask. It wasn't called. Oh, my. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty blade run. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's probably what Dylan's upset about. Larry Woolridge uh, got away with one. His cook with his hand in the cookie jar. Look out, they get the screen off, and here comes Byron Milligan. And Byron Milligan picks up a first down as he's throwing tacklers off of him. And uh -oh, good. 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 he got the, the first down. down. Yeah. You don't need to. Is there a flag? Yeah, down? there was a flag. I think they're going to get a rough in the passer. Probably a makeup call from on D. 
Dylan the last time. I, I, I think that's what they're going to say. Although it was kind of bang bang him releasing the ball. I don't think there's a flag. Well, yeah, yeah there's a flag down. It's, it's almost the same color as the grass. That's the problem. <laughs> Hang on. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 14, defense, 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. The distance results in a first down. See, see I think this is a makeup call. It looked kind of bang, bang, but remember, missed the blatant face mask on the earlier play, but as he's releasing this, that's, that's, that's bang, bang there in my book. But I, again, I think it's a makeup call from the face mask. All of a sudden, the ball is up past the 50, and, and again, on third down and long, Faraday converts. So the ball is up to the 48 yard line. They're now five of 12 on third downs. Football at the 48 yard line here for Faraday. Oh, that's offside. And starting to get a little slap Number here. Number 23 defense, five yard penalty. It remains first down. Well, they had been trying to time the snap count and it just when you think you may have learned the cadence, Dylan probably changes it up and McKnight blatantly offsides there. Six pre-snap penalties here in this game. First down and five. And on the Slant pattern, Justin Burns to catch and another flag is down in the defensive secondary of the Warriors. And the Warriors have called a timeout. I would we can do I would imagine Zephaniah Powell is wanting to Talk to his guys here. Downfield, number 58 offense, five yard penalty, three play first down. Well, that takes away an 18 yard pass play. First charge timeout. Yeah. One of the few times he has time to complete a pass back there and then get taken away. Well, this week again on Yearview's High School Football Recruiting Podcast over the middle, the silly season causing havoc on the National Recruiting Trail with the early signing period rapidly approaching. In our final podcast before the early signing period opens on December 19th, Jeremy is joined by Greg Biggins of 247sports.com to break down why so many prospects will opt to sign early while Oregon's class is so good and whether Chip Kelly's unique recruiting approach will work. All that and more on this week's episode of Over the Middle Podcast. Check it out at yearview.com. First down and 10 for Stanley Smith and the Faraday Trojans down by 32. Kobe Dillon just getting out. out of the pocket. Sapsher after him, throws it away. Boy, Sapsher, he's got a motor on him too. Some serious wheels. Dylan's just had a rough night, man. <laughs> he, he's giving it all up. I mean, you can, the last going to end up being the last game of the season for him, but I mean, he is just, there's been no quitting this guy. And, but watch Sasha, you want to know why he's being recruited on the next level? Watch him, <laughs> look at that body move there. I mean, he's going to get a guy playing quarterback that's got the speed of a running back. That man's called damage all night. Yep. Uh, and a minor earthquake here. <laughs> Second and 10, one pass option. And thought we'd see a little bit more of that tonight as Green makes the catch over the middle for another Faraday first down for 14 yards, a little shoving after the play. Trojans moving the ball here. Yeah, Green just has not been as active as, as, as he probably needed to be tonight. And again, some of that is not having the time, but I know Faraday wanted to establish the run and just couldn't get the run game going other than with Dylan and his legs. And you know, by the time you get back to the passing game, the game's pretty much out of reach.
first and ten. And we got a flag in the defensive secondary. Maybe that might be. Delay a game, offense. Five yard penalty. It remains first down. Delay a game. So they move the ball back to the 39 yard line. Should be our final play of the third quarter. They run it and nothing happening there for Byron Milligan. Just one score in that third quarter as A meets adds to its lead. Warriors trying to get back to the dome as Ishmael Sopcher and the Warriors putting on a show here tonight on Game Time. When I tore my ACL, I didn't think I'd ever be able to play soccer again. My doctor told me how important physical therapy would be, so I chose Peak. I'm glad I did. Now I'm stronger, faster, better than ever. Choose Peak. Choose Peak Performance Physical Therapy. When I get back to Baton Rouge, I get in my Bluesmobile and I drive right on down to Partners Barbecue. And you know what I do? I get me some ribs, all tender too. Some baked beans, some potato salad, some smoked sausage. <laughs> you got to come on down to Partners Barbecue, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't tell you guys about the game the other day. My seats were right behind me. You're not thinking about if you set the alarm before leaving the house. You're thinking about how you caught the home run that extended the series to seven. You're thinking you finally have a baseball story to rival theirs. You're thinking about how you caught the ball barehanded without spilling a drop. You're not thinking about if you set the alarm. Well, maybe just a little. Stay close to the moments that matter. Cox Home Life will take care of the rest. Exercising is my life, so when I had to stop because of my foot and ankle pain, I was absolutely devastated. I chose Peak and they taught me how to relieve the pain. They really do bring out the athlete in everyone. Choose Peak. Choose Peak Performance Physical Therapy. Set to begin the fourth quarter from Amin High School. Our final 12 minutes of the season here on Game Time. Jeff Palermo, Jason DeQuare, Smacker Miles down on the sidelines. The Amin Warriors in control, looking to get back to the dome where they will actually take on Welsh. Ooh, looks like we have a little double pass action here. Going down deep and that is pass interference every day of the week and two times on Friday nights. <laughs> if you want to see. The definition of pass interference, just watch this play here. <laughs> I don't even know if it qualifies as a tackle. <laughs> Darren uh, Branch just threw down Byron Milligan, and hopefully Milligan's okay. Yeah. His brother, or excuse me, his cousin, cousin has yeah, already been injured in this game. They both may go out with head. And again, it may be because of where he grabbed him up high and how he failed, but yeah, just threw, ooh, ooh man. he fell on his head too. His neck, there may be, the, the, both Milligan boys may be in the concussion protocol. Yeah, you can see him working on the neck, the neck area, not so much the head, fell on his helmet. And with pass interference not being a spot file in high school, it's actually the the right play. Uh, if you're beat, give up the 15, but don't give up the bomb. So as long as Amit holds on to this lead, they will head to the Superdome next week and they will play the Welsh Greyhounds, the defending champs in 2A. They are heading back to the Dome. They knocked off the top seed tonight, beating Manny 28 to 21. So how about that? Second straight season for the Welsh Greyhounds and getting to the Dome. And they will play Friday at 12 o'clock against uh, the Amit Warriors most likely. Of course, on the select side, all of the championship matchups are set. Three of them are repeats from a season ago. 
Division four, you have Division four, you have Lafayette Christian against Ascension Catholic. Division three, Notre Dame and Catholic High. How about that, Jason? The fact that we saw that game earlier in the regular season. Last year, it was Notre Dame blowing out Catholic High in the regular season, and then the Panthers winning in the state championship game. Panthers won a thriller over Metairie Park Country Day last Saturday to advance to take on Notre Dame. Dylan the throw here. Dylan on the run, and his pass is incomplete. And it's third down. Division two, St. Thomas Moore versus University High. And then Division one, a rematch of last year's thriller between John Curtis and Catholic High as Curtis beat Evangel last week. And Catholic, you saw it right here on your view, beating Rummel in overtime. Gonna be some good games. Certainly will, and all the games, you can watch them on CST is Cox Sports Television once again, bringing the games to you live starting on Thursday at noon. In the ball game now for Faraday running the football, that's Kobe Johnson, listed as a cornerback on the roster. Looks like uh, based on the scores we're seeing here, Zachary and West Monroe will meet in the 5A state championship game. Zachary is the sixth seed. And the Broncos will look to go defend their state championship. Last time we looked, Neville was beating 25, or excuse me, and the car beating Neville. Oh, oh man, pass just, over the middle and just drops. Just that kind of night. I mean, when it is not clicking, it's not clicking. and. You know, they had the penalties, they've had all the botches, the miscues, and here just, again, when you do have time to complete it, hits his man, burns on the number, and he just drops it. Warren Easton beating Leesville 54-14, so Carr and Warren Easton will meet for the 4A title. That's their, as long as Carr holds on to that lead over Neville. Dylan. Across the field, two receivers there, and one of them makes the grab. That's Justin Burns. Yeah, and that Zachary game is not over. It's just the third quarter, 54-43. <laughs> that's with the, with those explosive offenses, a whole quarter. That's a that's an eternity. Doesn't look like, and I, I haven't seen what's um, happening in 1A or 3A. Third down and five here coming up. Pass complete to Elijah White. But a lot of your uh, Blue Bloods uh, are making it to the Dome. That, I mean, A. Meade, obviously, they, they've been there. This is, for A. Meade, this is going to be their third trip to the state championship game since 2011. Check that. This guy will be their fourth because they, they were runner-ups in 2014, 2011, 2016. Remember in 2015, they had that great team. And then so here it looks like uh, Dylan, is he going to get into the end zone? Yeah. And he does. Good for him. That guy, he deserves that. He worked hard all night. Things have not been there for him. But this guy is just sheer grit, determination. And I tell you what, he's going to need an ice bath in the morning. Yeah, he's probably cramping up a little yeah. bit. You see he's got that brace down there on his, you know, that, 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 this may be it for him. But this play has kind of been there for him. And, you know, just straight quarterback run there. Looping off the field for Amy Shamir Buckley. But in 2015, if you remember that year, they don't want to remember it around here in Amy, but that was a pretty good team, and they beat Bogalusa, but there was a fight at the end of the game, and then Bogalusa had to, or excuse me, Fer or uh, Amy had a, they had to forfeit the semifinal game. And that ended up allowing, I believe, Lutcher to get in the state championship game. And that was when Lutcher and St. James actually played each other. I think it allowed St. James to get to the state championship game, if I recall that correctly. Dylan, yeah. and they convert on the two-point conversion. 
Making a grab in the back of the end zone, Justin Burns. Well, and making this thing a little more respectable here. And they're not going to go away. Look, 10 53. These guys got a lot of fight in them. Faraday gets on the scoreboard for the second time tonight as Kobe Dillon finding Burns in the back of the end zone. We'll be back after this. Tonight's game time play of the game is brought to you by Podna's Barbecue. Slow cooked, fall off the bone perfection, and the best baked beans in America. When company comes to town, company's coming! We go all out. All you gotta do is get down here and visit Baton Rouge. Tonight's Game Time League standings are brought to you by the best place for you to live and work in South Louisiana is West Feliciana Parish. Check out wfparish.org. West Feliciana Parish, where you really can have it all. Ten fifty-three left to go in the fourth quarter. The Amy Warriors leading the Faraday Trojans, thirty-eight to fourteen. Last time, uh, looks like a score here in the fourth quarter late. Oak Grove leading West St. John 30 to nothing. So Oak Grove looks like they'll be in the dome. That's a passionate fan base. Up in Northeast Louisiana. That would be the first game of the day on Thursday, the 1A state title game. Watch out, he's got speed. Watch out. Cameron Henderson all the way up to midfield before he's finally tackled by Blake Tarver. So the Warriors take over at the 48 yard line and send it down to the field and Smacker Miles. Guys, recruiting is in full swing, especially with that early signing period in December coming up upon us really quickly here. These college coaches are headed to the homes to do in-home visits. They're also headed to the schools. And Amy's coach Powell said that they've had every conference in the country, all five power conferences, all power five conferences represented at Amy just this week. He said that these guys have been really excited about it and they haven't really practiced differently because they are so and it's so important to them to represent their Amy team well to their current coaches. That's right. I mean, the players, uh, there's a lot of self-policing going on with this Amy squad. You don't need just a, a high-profile college coach to come look at you to get you going in practice. Run up the middle there, second down and 10 coming up. Yeah, good defensive stop here. Finally, some penetration there, but it's kind of what we Faraday. saw early on in the yep. game. I mean, Faraday on the first two drives, Henry Thomas, he was all over the field. Second down and nine. And falling down on the 50 yard line is Gilmore. Maybe a yard, that's about it. So third down and long here. It doesn't matter how big the town is. If you're good and you got players, they'll come find you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, I, bet, I wonder how many of those coaches have jumped on a plane and been to Eight Meet, Louisiana. Rain really coming oh, down man, hard now. Wow. The hardest of the nights, as you can hear That's it banging off the metal bleachers. And they're going to throw the ball, or Gilmore might run it. Now Gilmore gets rid of it, and it's caught. Devontae Lee to the 33. First down for the Warriors. And we're about ready to have a mud bowl here. 15-yard pass play between Amani Gilmore and Devontae Lee. Boy, it is coming. Yeah, this is kind of the type of rain that you would see in August when you're just practicing. We were wondering when it would open up, and it has here. Just over nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. 
They run the football with Corey McKnight. A nice juke move there. Uh -oh, and Corey went. McKnight stays on his feet inside the 10. Dragging a tackler. Touchdown, Warriors. Wow. 34 yards for Corey McKnight. Well, that's kind of the night it's been for a meeting. We really hadn't called McKnight's name much, but he's their, their key running back and normally does a lot of the damage on the ground for them. But this thing here is uh, uh, just an unbelievable run. Too bad we didn't have this one earlier to put with the rest of our highlights from this year, but this would have clearly made it. Spun around on the pile there, kept his balance, fought off two defenders, and into the end zone. Wow. Seven rushes, 43 yards, and a touchdown for McKnight, who's had a lot of touchdowns this season, 36 on the year. And now the extra point try here for Liam Adamson. Bad snap, and well, they're, well, this time with the slippery field, just falling on it for Amy was Cameron Henderson. And it's now a 44-14 lead for the Warriors. As every, everyone uh, getting the rain gear on right now, and the one guy that's kind of experiencing the rain first is our cameraman on the Louisiana lift. And game time on Yearview, Louisiana. Thanks, Louisiana Lift, for their support of this telecast. Specializing in customer service on equipment, rentals, parts, and training, Louisiana Lift has been serving its customers since 1980. You can check them out online at lalift.com or call their Baton Rouge office at 225-753-5700 or contact the New Orleans area office at 504-463-3400. Louisiana Lift, they're always on call even in the rain. True fans right there. Been some weird postseason weather. Yeah, Remember our first round game, we thought it was gonna start snowing. It was so cold, windy, and rainy. And then last week we had some more rain and we had the fog and Today, it's uh, been a warm day. Yeah, it's been a very mild yeah. playoff season, other than that Holy Cross. That first Saint game, that was, <laughs> that was pretty darn cold. And not only that, just the wind, the yeah. rain, and you can only do something on one side of the field. Considering uh, during the regular season, I don't think the weather was a factor in any of our games. I mean, we didn't have any rain games in the regular season. No, I think it may have some sprinkles here or there, but nothing, yeah. nothing major. Deontay Dishta on the return. Let's take a look at the Monogram Express scoring drive. And that would be Corey McKnight on the touchdown. Yeah, and I think for Amy, at this point in the football game, 44-14, 8.45 left, it's raining. I'm gonna make sure that I keep my stars and my studs probably on the sideline. I wouldn't want them to twist anything or mess anything up heading into the dome. Amy came into this game outscoring opponents 140 to six in the postseason. Dylan winding up, going deep, and did he hang on to that? No, he did not, could not make the grab. That would have been a heck of a play yeah, by Jamie their, and Green. That's their guy, and he almost comes up with it. And Zachary has put up 60 on Destrahan, 60 that, that, to 43. They are an offensive machine. I thought the Saints were too. They struggled last night. <laughs> oh. yeah, get it out of their system now. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing, not, nothing wrong with a slice of humble pie. Yeah. <laughs> Second down and 10. Dylan just dumps it off. And I don't know if they're gonna be able to make something out of this. Yeah, Joseph Taylor that. running around. Joseph Taylor bouncing off tackles. And well, he, he did make something out of it, a two yard pass play in the end. Yeah, I don't see Sapshire. Sure. There's all kinds of new numbers and jerseys out there. Yeah, and just, just can't take the risk. Yeah, and it, what's kind of amazing with a 2A team like this that they're able to sub 
as many players out. I don't see one starter out on that field right now for the Warriors. Yeah. I think what happens is you send a kid out play safety. Well, I've never played safety before. <laughs> You're going to play it right now. <laughs> Dylan has been running around a lot, and he picks up another third down and long. And look at Kobe Dillon. Dillon will finally run out of gas. But what a night for him. Man, this guy, I, I tell you what, you know, it's it's what's underneath that four, and it's heart. That's what it is by Dillon. He knows his team. Look, he's barely limping back to the huddle. Been a tough night, and then just giving it all, his all. He's got to be cramping up after that 48-yard run. Something tells me he's going to try to throw this football. He would like to anyways. Got it. Got it. And that's going to be another touchdown for the Trojans. Nicely done. Justin Burns into the end zone. And Faraday continues to keep putting points on the board. 29-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, just a good route here. A little post. And just lays it out there perfectly for Burns. Burns has been active in the receiving department here. There's a big huddle involving every single official. I didn't see a flag down, but then again, flags have been difficult to see. Well, I, I, I can read the lips and I'm seeing. Oh, there's one. Yeah. <laughs> so are they seeing maybe a late hit there if that was in the back yeah. of the end zone? The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, on sports, unnecessary roughness, number 20 of the defense, 15 yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Well, that makes it a little easier now for Faraday, certainly to go for the onside kick, but let's take a look at this. Is yeah, that's late. That's just, just late. Just don't need to do that, and Joseph you put, Taylor. You're putting these. Yeah, just, just can't, can't, you got to keep your composure there. Amy has 11 penalties for 93 yards. They'll go for two. Dylan stands uh, in there and he him. missed him. Through the hands of Green, or maybe at least past the fingertips. So 24 point game. And Faraday, I would imagine, will try an onside kick. Yeah, nothing to lose here. In fact, they've been kicking onside kicks all game, <laughs> not intentionally. Yeah. That would no one please enter the field due to the safety of the players. At the end of the game, we ask no one please enter the field for the safety of the players. So it'll kick the ball off in Amy territory. 29 yard touchdown catch by Justin Burns. He's a junior, so is Kobe Dillon. Faraday's bringing him back a lot next season. They just had a couple of kids from last year's team that went to LSU, Dantree Scott, uh, two kids that uh, redshirted this year or in the process of redshirting. So I would think Faraday will be another team to be reckoned with next season. Amy covers the football up at the 23. First down and 10. Here for a meet. Let's Another see who they bring out they there. Gilmore going back out there. Cameron Henderson was the quarterback last year for the Warriors. He's been one of their top wide receivers. 
as Amani Kilmore. Legal substitution called on Amy. Down. Zephaniah Powell grew up in Mississippi. His father's a minister. And he's in a good situation here at Amy High School, coaching at a power with a fan base that loves their high school football here. Football means a lot in the town of Amy. Losing his helmet, he'll have to sit out of play now is Corey McKnight. Get to meet a lot of great college coaches. <laughs> with all these assistant coaches and head coaches that he gets to meet with, with all these great players that Amy produces. And it's going to continue. He just keeps breeding talent, or Amy's breeding talent year in, year out. Of course, Devontae Smith last year catching the winning touchdown pass for Alabama to beat Georgia in the national championship game. Run up the middle. I asked uh, Zephaniah Powell what was your reaction when he saw Smith make that grab against the Bulldogs, and he said I, he started crying. He said, "Yeah, I mean it's an emotional time. You you watch these kids grow up as in high school. Imagine you know some of these kids when you see them as a freshman and them making the biggest." catch of their lives. Well, it's, been, it's been fun just for me. I mean, you know, I guess my fourth or fifth year, but I've been watching them, you know, progress, yeah. freshman, sophomore, and then you see them on Saturdays. Uh, it's been good to follow these good young athletes that we have here in Louisiana. Third down at 11, Corey McKnight. For a couple. And it's fourth down, and we'll see if Amy punts. I would imagine they will. Out the punt here for the Warriors. Ladarius Armin. Hey, punt, punt, punt. Only the second punt for Amy. The first one was for 33 yards, and this is a team that really hasn't punted too much this year. Well, I can tell you the first thing they're going to say over there is just get the snap down. Yeah. Don't snap it overhead and get the punt off. Don't don't surrender any more unnecessary points. High snap, and it's blocked. That's what you can't have. Faraday will have the football. Yeah, chance to get a little bit closer. Let's take a look at our game time play of the game. Amani Gilmore scrambling, looking, looking, and in the back of the end zone, Kyle Maxwell goes up and gets it. This is our Pondas barbecue play of the game. He just plucks it. I mean, you talk about good hands. Oh, that was a great catch. Man. And Kyle Maxwell headed to Louisiana Tech. Right now he's out there playing defense. I think some of the starters are coming back out there for the Warriors. Kobe Dillon. How did he get away from that tackler? Still on his feet. Look at this. Me? Breaking tackles left and right. I, I don't know how he has the energy <laughs> to still do this. Three yard run after all that. And look at his teammates having to help him up. Wow. Gain of three somehow. This first one here is, I, I don't, because Quadri Jackson has made every tackle, and he missed him that time, and then he missed him again. He's just a big, tough guy. He's on the run again. Flag down, and he just dumps it off. He's got a little Ben Roethlisberger in him, right? Yeah, he's got a little Ben, a little Dak Prescott. Yeah. He's, got, he's got all that stuff. Hundred and ten yards rushing tonight for the junior QB, Kobe Dillon. Holding number fifty-five offense, ten yard penalty, second down. Derek Shepard called for the holding penalty. Well, the only reason Faraday's happening.
add a little life is because not just running the football, but you see Dylan right there has been able to buy some time in the pocket, like on that last play, just scrambling around and keeping the play alive. But he has been under duress the entire night. I think I got another delay of game, right? No, or they got some kind of movement, just illegal procedure, false right, start. Number 57, offense, five-yard penalty, the remain second down. We've had our share of penalties in this game. Jontez Curry called for the penalty there. Man, 60 to 50, Zachary leading Destrahan. Yeah, that's not basketball. <laughs> Seven penalties for Faraday, 12 for a meet. Warriors have 98 penalty yards. Trojans 56. Second down and a long way to go here. The ball all the way out to the 32. They got to get to the three. Pressure coming. Dylan nearly lost it in a big sack. Brought down by James McGowan. Yeah, they, they brought the pressure again, and it was supposed to be a screen, but the, you can see there he's in his face before he even has a chance to release the screen. That tells you. So for, so for Faraday to get this first down, they're going to have to cross the Mississippi-Louisiana border. Third down, and is it really 32? I think it's more than that. I think it's third down and 40. Five wide receiver package. Dylan as he gets hit as he throws and the pass is incomplete to Jamie and Green. Yeah, I had an opportunity to get him there. I thought Green may have been able to come down with this one, but a little high. Fourth down. I don't know what they'll do, I guess. Well, it looks like they'll bring the punt team on. Another drive that. Yeah, I mean, another drive that started in, in Amy territory. They don't score any points. That's the third drive tonight. Imagine, yeah, that's right. Jason, if they scored on those three drives, we, we got a nail biter right now. Yep, man, they've had those opportunities. The first down marker's down there by about the three yard line. And they're punting from almost the 50. And it uh, takes a Amy bounce and roll, and we'll keep it here. 322 left as the Warriors will head down to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome to take on the Welsh Greyhounds, the defending champs in 2A. That'll be a fun matchup. Faraday, two straight years reaching the semifinals. Lost a tight one last year to St. Helena tonight. They've ran into a buzzsaw. All right, Jason, we've seen some of the top teams in the state this year. John Curtis, Zachary, University High, Catholic High. Am I missing anyone? We saw Notre Dame. They were pretty darn good, too. And we watched this Amy team play tonight. Am I leaving anyone out as far as really good teams that we've seen? Well, I mean, I would throw St. Thomas Moore. Okay, in the right. yeah. Offense, okay. That's five yard penalty, replay first down. I, I, I Fair think, enough. I, I think they I like forget that. about him because, you know, you guys in the same deal. Yeah, but, yeah. but I thought that, that that's an impressive team. Out of that, I mean, you high, we all agree, I think, is number one. Um, probably right now, Zachary would be number two, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and, and look, I, that could almost be a 1A, 1B thing. Uh, you know, Zachary, this time of year, if they played that U high game again and it was for all the marbles on the table, that, that could be a contest. Right. I'd say I'd put Curtis at three. This is just teams we've seen because right. we, we haven't seen Edna Carr. I mean, Edna Carr is obviously in the conversation. West Monroe's in the conversation. Uh, but we just haven't seen them. So yet, uh, so where are we at? We were at uh, Curtis three. I'll put Catholic High four, but that could change after next weekend. But you have Catholic High ahead of Curtis. I got Cur oh, I, I'm Curtis. I'm going to give Curtis three. I, I think that was an impressive win over a very it good was. evangel yes. team last I, week. I think Catholic High has their hands full. 
And you know, this Amy team is right up there. They're, they're, they're right up there. There's uh, plenty of talent. Let's take a look at our play player of the game. And you know, we talked about Ishmael Sapsher. We talked about Devontae Lee. But this quarterback, Amani Gilmore, who's headed to Kentucky, he was spectacular here tonight. That was the first touchdown pass. What about that touchdown that pass to Kyle Maxwell? Oh, that was a great catch. And then Gilmore was doing it with his feet, keeping the play alive here. He rushed for 86 yards and a touchdown tonight. A soft ball going to work again as Devontae Lee making the catch. I, I mean, look, this ain't me team is up there. Yes. I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't know where you had him in your list. Well, but, yeah, uh, I, I think we still oh, big hit in the yeah. backfield there. But I think so we let's kind of go over it again. So it was um, you yeah, go you high Zachary. I'll put Curtis. I'll put Catholic. You know, A meet St. Thomas Moore. I think yeah. it's kind of they're, they're right. They're right there. And, and look, that's a that's a very good Destrehan team too that yeah. Zachary is playing. Right. So I, you know, I'd have them somewhere around the mix. But uh, this A meet team is impressive. And they've got and the thing about it is they're good on both sides of the ball. Now I will tell you where they would get beat from some of these bigger programs is on special teams. Yeah. Gilmore, 194 yards, four touchdown passes here tonight, as he has thrown for over 2,000 yards this season. Yeah, it's just a good night for him. And again, Kentucky, I think, is getting one heck of a, a quarterback and just a good football player. 2.55 left to go. Trayvon Henderson is, no, that's not Trayvon, that's a 16. That's John Walker as the quarterback. Walker will run it on third and 13, and he'll go down towards the sidelines. So another big boy they put in there. <laughs> He's a big guy. So, Amy will punt the football again with 247 left to go. Well, this has been a part of Faraday's offense here is blocking punts or bad snaps. And every time I look at that score, Zachary, they, they are scoring at a prolific pace, 67 points now. <laughs> 67, is it 67.50? 67.50. Jeez. High punt. Ooh, wow. oh, big time hit. My goodness. Oh, <laughs> in the middle of the field. Yeah, that's at the, I was going to say, where's the flags on that? You can't wow. be just drilling guys. Well, we got to thank our crew for the tremendous work that they've done all season long <laughs> this year. In the rain, yes. in the wind, in the heat, in the chill of the nights. I tell you what, they've been awesome, awesome this year with the replays and catching the various angles, and they've been on it. Been a flawless season behind the scenes this year. It truly has. Feels like we were just at Berman Stadium for Landry Walker, John Curtis, our season it, opener. It goes back quick. Yeah, yeah. And I will tell you this, and just from the games we've seen, Jeff, uh, Louisiana's loaded with talent. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I mean, they are just, they are loaded with tremendous football players all across the state. I want to thank our producers, Kim Giot, also Cameron Galloway, the executive producer for Game Time, Eric Coleman, Jim Hogg, who does a tremendous job on the sales front, Walter Volpatti, our director, all the guys in the truck as they go deep here, and it's incomplete. Been a fun year. It really has. Has. Oh, 
So next week in the Dome, it all starts with the 1A game at 12 o'clock on Thursday, and then you'll also have Division Four that day. And you'll have Division Three, I think, that night, if I have that correctly. Pass is caught. Just shy of the first down. Kentwood beat Haynesville 20 to 14. How wow. about that? <laughs> That's without Trey Palmer. That's huge. That's a big win for the Kangaroos. Congratulations to Jonathan Foster. Wow. So no trip to the dome for Haynesville. Another good run there by Dylan, who has been truly the offense tonight for Faraday. Yeah, he really has. I mean, again, just can't say enough great things about him, what he's meant to this Faraday team. Started off injured and came back and really put a whole new life into this team. 20 carries for 110 yards. One twenty seven left to go in this ball game. All right, so yeah, it's one A Division Four, Division Three on Thursday. Some pressure coming in on Kobe Dillon, and he's going to be sacked. Friday will be two A Division Two, and then three A, and then Saturday. They're going to have some monster games on Saturday. Yeah. You got Catholic High versus John Curtis. You'll have Carr versus Warren Easton, and then West Monroe versus Zachary. I mean, you got six of the biggest names in high school football in the state of Louisiana right now going at it on Saturday. And again, you can catch all the action on CST if you can make it out to the Dome, but also encourage you to get to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome and watch some great high school football. Oh, he's one of the best weekends of the year. Yes, it is. Where dreams are made, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I got there once, but it wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Zachary, I mean, not Zachary, Rustin was ranked the number two team in the country. And they beat us 63 to 10. Oh, some uh, the water cooler dumping is going on on the uh, <laughs> yeah. sidelines as Zephaniah Powell got soaked if he wasn't already wet to begin with. Yeah. Another completion there. At least they did it when there's no chance of going into seven overtimes. Jiren Milligan making the catch. There's another Milligan out there for Faraday. A lot of hugs. You know, man, well, everybody <laughs> getting get wet. Yeah. <laughs> if you contributed, you're getting wet. A little rain on top, a little water on top of the rain. After losing the country day, he said his team didn't panic. There they it is. Oh, man. Lost the season opener to the Cajuns and said no panic. Came back, reviewed the tape on Sunday, went to work on Monday, and they've been nearly flawless since then. See, this is when you got it. Well, let's see what Dylan does here on the scramble. Got a man back there, just just missed him. But, but Jeff, this is when you, as a coach, you have to be happy that you play football in the South. Yeah. You see, <laughs> because when that ice bucket goes on you, now today is what is it, 75, yeah. something like that. You know, you imagine up in the North. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've done a couple of college football games this year with Gary Reasons, and it was the Giants in the 80s that started that tradition oh, really? with, with Bill Parcells. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're the ones that started the tradition. So there was no water cooler dumping before the 80s? No, 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 that was one. Huh. Rain really coming down again here as the celebration is, I think A. Meat's going to get hit with a uh, sideline deal. Yeah. Yeah, look, it may be raining, <laughs> but they don't feel it. No, they don't. This, this whole side, 
is electric. Sideline warning. It's a five yard penalty <laughs> against a meet. Now well, just. They'll be dancing in the rain here in a second. But yeah, Bill Parcells, he was the first uh, victim of the uh, Gatorade bath. The pass is almost caught, almost intercepted. Instead, it's incomplete. Nine seconds left to go here. Got to thank Smacker Miles. Great job by her this season. Her first year as a sideline reporter. And these are not the easy games to be a sideline reporter. <laughs> no, she did awesome. And you got to credit her because she's down there fighting all the elements and <laughs> trying to make sure she doesn't get doused with the water as well. <laughs> I'm not sure if the suit is to protect the rain or the ice bucket. <laughs> guys, we have such a fancy production. I couldn't find the camera. <laughs> I so appreciate you guys' support. Seriously, both Jeff and Jason. You all have been awesome to me, and I appreciate our... Across America with Mega Jackpots, it's Mega Millions. What's up, America? I'm John Crow. It's Friday, November 30th, and tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is an estimated annuitized $190 million. To win that jackpot, you must bet these five white balls plus that gold Mega Ball. Now, let's see if I can make you a millionaire tonight. Our first winning number tonight is 25. That's followed by 63. Up next, we have 40. That's followed by 43. And your final white ball for this Friday evening is... 28 now for the Mega Ball. That Mega Ball number is 19. Again, tonight's winning numbers are 25, 63, 40, 43, 28. The gold Mega Ball is 19. Now, for all matches, lost six numbers. Tuesday's jackpot could be $208 million. Good luck in play on, America. On Friday at noon. Yeah, congrats, congrats to this Amy program. And that's a look, and that good show of sportsmanship right there. And you can you can better believe Powell is telling Fit Faraday and Smith, you got an unbelievable ball club. <laughs> we sure don't want to see you again next year. Yeah. I I don't think we'll I think we'll see this Faraday team again. Uh, this is a young oh, team yes. and got a good coach in Stanley Smith. 44-20 the final score. The Amy Warriors heading back to the dome. We'll hear from Zephaniah Powell when we come back. This is game time on your view. Tonight's game time player of the game is brought to you by Peak Performance. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete and everyone stronger, faster, better. Choose Peak. Check out the stories behind the games. Visit yourview.com slash Louisiana. I'm Brett Favre. As a quarterback in the NFL, if I didn't stay focused, I ended up on my back or worse. Even the smallest distraction could make a good play or offensive drive come to an end. When you're in a car, the smallest distraction could end much more than a drive. It could end someone's life. Just like I refuse to lose on the field, I refuse to lose someone I love to distract a driver. And you should too. Focus on the road. Don't drive distracted. A message from Farm Bureau Insurance. People have come to a craftsmanship. Cribs Incorporated. People look up to our roofing. We craft each job with care. Hey, Joe Martin here. You've seen our commercials over the years and you may be wondering, what's in it for me? Well, ITI Technical College has been selected by Forbes Magazine as a top 32 year college. But even more than that, the reason we do this is you. Our tagline is for a better life. And we mean that for you to be able to have the life you've always dreamed about, to do the things for your family you've always dreamed about. And it can begin here where we are dedicated to your success because here at ITI, the reason we do it is you. 
The Amy Warriors heading back to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome with a thorough win here tonight over the Faraday Trojans. 44 to 20, the number two seed in the Class 2A bracket, knocking off the number three seed. Great performance by Faraday as uh, they put it on. Or great perform it was a good performance by Faraday, but a great performance by Amy here as they put it on this Faraday team. Yeah, they did. I mean, they showcased their talent and why they're going to the Dome. They deserve to be there. That defensive front is just impressive with Shopshire leading that deal and then Gilmore and there's all those receivers they've got. They've just got a lot of weapons and they'll be able to display that in the dome. Well, speaking of Amani Gilmore, the quarterback for the Amy Warriors, Smacker Miles is on the field standing right next to him and let's throw it to her. What does it mean to you to be headed to the dome with your team? Uh, it's an amazing experience because of what I had to go through last year sitting out the whole season. It's, it's just, I'm, I'm just blessed to be able to do that and play for my team hard, you know what I'm saying? We're going to go down there and play this one. It's, it's just a blessing. Thank you. In that off season you mentioned, is this how you imagined the semifinal game ending? Yes, because uh, I feel like I came out here and I prepared myself for two years. I had set out last year. I couldn't play last year. And I've been preparing myself throughout the whole year just to come here and just do this. And we still got some things to work on. And we ain't had a perfect game, but it's going to be all right. You mentioned things to work on, but really you had a pretty good offensive night. How will that momentum carry you into the state game? Oh, it's going to carry me uh, very well because I feel like I ain't played. Like this. this is my first big game I played like this. And uh, I feel like I still got room to uh, get better, but it's going to be all good. Thanks, Imani. You're welcome. Back to you, Jeff. The transfer from Hammond had to sit out last year and it was well worth the wait as he is leading the Amy Warriors to the state championship. They will take on the Welsh Greyhounds next Friday at 12 o'clock. Want to thank everyone involved, our producer Kim Giot, the executive producer of Game Time, Eric Coleman, our director Walter Ropatti, statistician Tommy Cooper, Smacker Miles, Jason DeQuair, I'm Jeff Wormo. Thanks for watching Game Time all season long. Game Time on Your View was brought to you by Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Ready to serve you with auto, homeowners, life insurance, and more. Real service, real people. West Feliciana Parish. The best place for you to live and work in South Louisiana is West Feliciana Parish. Check out wfparish.org. ITI Technical College. Your key to a better life. And by Peak Performance. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete and everyone stronger, faster, better.